have to shut down a very fine running attack that the Washington Redskins use. If they allow the Redskins to run the ball 35, 40 times, the Eagles won't beat them. And in turn, the Redskins can't turn the ball over. All right, Dick, nice to have you back. And what a beautiful day for football. It's 46 degrees, humidity's 53%. A little breeze out of the west at 10 miles an hour. And you're looking, of course, at Steve Cox, who will kick off. So the Eagles did win the toss down there. Herman Hunter, Andre Waters, and Evan Cooper are back. You're looking, of course, at Herman Hunter in the middle. A very dangerous return man. And any Redskin fan will know that they've had a lot of problem with kickoffs being run back, like San Francisco did to them only a week ago. We're ready for it. Week number 14. A high kickoff, but short. Hunter at the 10. Hunter gets to the 20. Good coverage for the Redskins. Here is the Philadelphia offense. Ron Jaworski, number seven at quarterback. Ernest Jackson heading for another 1,000-yard year rushing, and nobody knows him. Haddix, Kenny Jackson, and Mike Quick, two great receivers on the outside, and John Spagnola. Kenny Reeves, a rookie at left tackle, will watch him. Kenny, Dennard, Ron Baker, and big Leonard Mitchell at right tackle becoming almost a pro bowler, perhaps. A lot of noise here, and it's a first and ten. The numbers on Ron Jaworski last week, and the team lost. The Eagles trying to make a rushing game out of it. Ernest Jackson out of the eye. Maybe gets a yard and a half. Here they are, and they are tough against the pass, number one in the league, but they'll play the run tough, too. Charlie Mann, Dave Butts, the Tasmanian Devil, Hamill, the rookie at right tackle, and Dexter Manley that Reeves will be working against. Kaufman, Okowitz, Malott, underrated as linebackers. Secondary is playing great. Daryl Green, Vernon Dean, Cherry, and Curtis Jordan at the safety. Second down eight. Handoff on the street, on the Jackson. To the 29-yard line, short of the first down. That was a real nice block by John Spagnola, number 88, to tie it in. But Monty Coleman fought off the block and ended up coming back into the play. But a good block by John Spagnola. Spagnola, the Ivy Leaguer, it's no longer an exceptional fact now. A lot of good Ivy Leaguers are playing. Fensick with the Bears. Spagnola came from Yale, and he's a 240-pounder that's a hard worker. Third down, one. The high formation. Short yardage high. Jackson for the first first down. Bob Fredericks crew just signaled the first one. That's the zebras that are in control. A festive day here though. Yesterday the Army Navy played here. Marion. There's the old Swamp Fox, Marion Campbell, who's the defensive coordinator. Tom, as you know, for me, the six of the seven years that I coached here, very fine defensive football coach. Under some fire, they, the people think. Usually they're critics that aren't in football, but here's first and ten. Jaworski, Duffy, unloading and struck. Jackson couldn't hang on. Good protection. He had time. If you give Jaworski that much time, he normally finds a guy open, Tom. Of course, the Redskin defense against the pass is number one. They have done a super job. Richie Puttabone, Larry Pecatello, La Laverne Tarkerson, they've done a great job of coaching defense. Second down and ten. A tough call against a veteran good defensive club. The draw play, quick draw. Nothing. Maddox gets maybe a couple. Old Taz was in there again, number 78, the defensive right tackle. This guy, Tom, is a real piece of work. He came walking off the field the other day, and he, some guy came up and said, hey, you got my helmet. He says, no, it ought, no, it's not, it's mine. And he had his own helmet on and didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> he was taken under the wing of Dave Butts, the giant all-pro tackle, the left side, and also Russ Grimm. And they've taught him the rules of the road. Third down and 10. Shotgun for the Eagles. Jaworski, the receiver, Garrity, hooked up. And the Washington 
defense more than adequate to stop this first charge. It looked as if Jaworski, Jaworski expected Garrity to keep going down the sideline, and that's where he threw the ball, and Garrity hooked it up. Fine coverage by Barry Wilburn, number 45. Michael Horan will kick the left footer. He's been kicking much better the last two or three weeks. Deep is Kenny Jenkins. Used to be an eagle, used to be a lion, and is now one of the most dangerous return men around. Moran's kick. Good hang time on this one. Jenkins has to go. Now at the 10-yard line. The Redskins will have the ball at about their own 17-yard line coming out. A 58-yard putt. There's no score. Not yet. But is watching down in Washington, recovering, we hope. But Schrader, the young man, is there at the controls, inexperienced, but a lot of talent. George Rogers gets the start. Mark Artma, Clint Didier, and Don Warren. They'll go with the one back option, obviously. Jacoby Grimm, Bostic Huff, and Mark May. Grimm is playing hurt, as he always does. It's first and ten. The ball is on the 17. Handoff to Rogers. Tom, in the left side. Tom, did you notice that time that 85 Don Warren, the normal fine blocking tight end, was lined up as a fullback in the I formation? A small refrigerator. Reggie White, Kenny Clark, and Greg Brown on defense. Reggie White is the guy from the USFL. He's going to be some player. Wilkes, Reichenbach, Griggs, and Gary Cobb. The secondary, Edwards and Young, Ellis, and Wes Hopkins, the best, is in there today. It's second down, seven. Hand off Rogers. I don't think so. Maybe a couple of yards. Rogers is running on his 27th birthday today. And I know his family at home, Lynn and Lushan and Brandon Troy, are all wishing him a happy birthday. But I don't think the Eagles would like to provide him with that opportunity. Do you, Tom? And what Gibbs told us yesterday was that. Of course, Riggins, old Riggo, said, if you want to start, George, whenever you want to, you know where I am on the bench. Wasn't that a great there. comment? Huh? Two great running backs splitting the time. It's third down and five. Keith Griffin is in. The nickel defense is in. He's going to run with it. Schrader, first down, out over the 35. Jay Schrader, the 6'4", 215-pounder. You're going to watch the quarterback come in what I think was a design draw and hit that seam right in between the two defensive tackles. Now, you'll see the left defensive tackle stunt him out of there. He sees that hole. There it is. Now you can see Bostic, number 53, leading the play. Good call. The center was waiting for it and looking for the back. A 14-yard gain, a first down. And, boy, this young quarterback has a lot to offer. The quick pass, first pass. Oh, hit hard at the 40 by Roynell Young. Is Art Monk. A quick delivery, a two-step drop that way. He throws short, it hard. Short play action, freeze linebackers, get out there quickly. They actually use that, Tom, as a running play, that short hitch pattern. You've got to be careful of throwing short hitches and that kind of stuff in front of the Eagle corners because they don't blow out of there. They line up deep and they'll attack those kind of things. And they might roll up and try to go for the ball on you. That's a pretty gutsy call. There's Art Monk, one of the greatest of the last four or five years playing in this league. Second down and five. Rodgers is back in at the tailback. It's Didier gone. Play action pass. Schrader gets away from it. Schrader picks up yardage. Two or three yards on the scramble. Greg Brown finally making the tackle. This is the advantage of being a quarterback and also being a mobile quarterback. Now watch him avoid the rush. He's still looking for the opportunity to throw. He avoids Reggie White, number 91. Now he's a ball kid. Another nice avoid, and there he is. Get on the ground, young man. Joe taught him how to do that nicely, didn't he? How about early in the year when he and Laufenberg didn't know who the third or second quarterback would be? They didn't think they would be kept around, and <laughs> now he's the starter for the Washington Redskins. Third down and three. Straight drop back. Almost intercepted by number 55, Reichenbach. Not a good throw and not a good read.
You're going to take a look at Reichenbach right here, number 55. He'll work inside out on the receiver, 86, Mike Dittier. Now watch it to the left of your screen. Now I think the quarterback thought he was going to turn inside, and he went outside. And Dittier slipped and fell at the same time. Steve Cox will come into punt. He was picked up and bailed this team out, but he does have a funny way of dropping it. You can block some punts on Cox. He drops it low. This is Cooper waiting for it. Taking a redskin bounce and down at about the 15-yard line. A 42-yard punt. And the two teams are sort of playing it between the 30s. No score here in the first quarter in Philadelphia. England 7 nothing over Detroit in the first. That's Tony Easton with a 16-yard touchdown run. Kansas City on top of Atlanta in the first 7 nothing. Green Bay on top of Miami 3 nothing. Wouldn't that be an interesting upset? And Cincinnati's hanging it on the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cincinnati Bengals can score some points. First and 10 on the 16. Inside handoff. The drive play by Ernest Jackson. Maybe gets a yard. Now remember the Eagles, the last game when they beat the Redskins down in the nation's capital, they had 175 yards rushing. But a lot of that was a young quarterback named Cunningham who started that game. There's no question that he could run, and that's how they ended up winning the football game. But I don't think the Eagles could beat the Redskins running. I think they're going to have to throw the ball because this group is very physical. A two-yard pickup, Dick. That sure substantiates what you said. 7.34 left in the first quarter. Second down eight. Pro setbacks. Hand off to Jackson, trying to get outside. Good defensive play. Maybe a yard gain, but Charles Mann really got to the outside. Great play by Neil Oprowitz, number 52, the middle linebacker. Watch this guy flow to the play. Watch him go now. Fine linebacker. Now look at him flow inside out, shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. He just waited for that guy to cross the line of scrimmage, and there he is, and the play was already made by man, number 71. And Okowitz carries so many bruises around. If you ever look at him without that uniform on, you'd think he's ready for Mayo Clinic. <laughs> what a tough ball player. Third down and eight. Third and eight, a tough play to call against this defense. Jaworski from the shotgun. Overthrowing a closely covered Michael Haddock. And Mel Coffin was all over him. That number one defense against the pass looks good for Washington. Jaworski had some time. The Redskins came after him with a good, strong rush, including some linebackers in that nickel defense. And you know, the, the Redskins linebacker core can play in the nickel defense better than most linebackers can. You know, most of the time we see six and seven defensive backs. They're pretty agile. Here's Haran's second punt. Another good hang time. Run back to the 40-yard line by Daryl Green, and he's piled up there. Daryl Green, the speedster, trapped before he got started. And everybody talks about turnovers and takeaways, but no team uh, exemplifies that like the Redskins of today. I know it, and this they're not playing true to their personality time. You can see right now, 26 takeaways. They've only resulted in 44 points. They've given the ball away, and at the same time, given up 110 points. And of course, the Redskins' philosophy is to score first, and they win games all the time. If they don't score first, the Redskins can be in trouble. First and 10, the toss. Back to George Rogers. Rogers makes a cut and gets to the outside. Short of midfield, he's knocked out by Wes Hopkins. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Well, Brookie, it's a no-huddle attack by the Cincinnati Bengals against the Dallas Cowboys. They went right down the field. Then Larry Kennebrew, with a superb second effort, scored a touchdown. They already had a safety. The Bengals now have recovered a fumble. They're threatening again. Back to Brookie. All right, the Bengals pulling out all the stops. And Weiss, of course, knows that the rest of the division is waiting for Dallas to lose. These two teams need Dallas to lose a lot. We'll show you that later on. Second down, two. Good pickup by George Rogers. Rogers running left. At least a first down and maybe a little more. Obtained from New Orleans and having to split time 
with John Riggins and Griffin, who's a heck of a little ball carrier, but seems to be a happy guy in that burgundy uniform. He likes it there. Of course, he's affiliated now with a winning organization. This organization is used to winning. They expect to win, though I don't think they take it for granted. That's why they keep winning. They find themselves right now in a little bit of a hole, Tom, but it wouldn't surprise me to see the Redskins battle out of it, especially with the leadership of Joe Gibbs and his coaching staff. A first and ten in Eagle territory. First time the penetration has happened today. A little over 541 left. Play action pass, and this is Didier. Didier trying to get away from Wes Hopkins. Claimed he was held. A flag is down at the 49-yard line of Washington. I think they called holding on Mark May, number 73. I'm not sure, Tom. Bob Frederick will tell us. Offensive holding on number 73. First down will be replayed. Dick Vermeer was absolutely right. Big Mark May, the number one draft of a few years ago. I'll tell you, and he's a good football player. He's given up the fewest sacks, I think, uh, through the most of this year and last year. And he's, within got Reggie, offensive line. he's got Reggie White, that 285-pounder, that looks like he's a future star in this league right on his shoulder. First and 20 for the Redskins. The draw play. Rodgers to the 45. Wes Hopkins coming up quickly. Remember a year ago when they said that Rigo was in the film room with the Hogs watching, getting ready for the Eagles, and they were talking about blocking all the defensive linemen and all linebackers, that. yeah. <laughs> and Riggins says, who's going to block 48? I want to know who's going to get Wes Hopkins. Don't worry about the line. <laughs> Hopkins is the hardest-hitting safety man, I guess, in all of football. He's one, I think, one, right now, maybe the most dominating defensive player in the secondary mm -hmm. in the National Football League, Tom. Second down and 18. Great drop. A lot of time. Bad decision. Intercepted by Reichenbach. The kid quarterback made a mistake. Gary Cobb, the fine linebacker, you'll see him come from this side, gets pressure on him here, forces the ball to be thrown maybe a little bit sooner, and then Reichenbach gets his first interception of the year. Now you see 50 Gary Cobb, now watch it, he keeps working. Coverage taking the pattern away downfield, he jumps and throws, bad decision, a rookie decision, and there's Mike Reichenbach with the football. Reichenbach, he's an upstate Pennsylvania lad, and that's his first interception. Big turnover. And as you mentioned, the Eagles are in Redskin territory. First and 10 from the 37. Jaworski intercepted. Okowicz is knocked out of bounds at the 45. is lined up right here. I do believe that the ball was tipped. Now he drops as the quarterback comes back. You'll see it's a straight drop back out of the eye. Now he drops. I think somebody tipped the ball right. No, he didn't tip it. Just hit him right as he threw the football and caused the poor pass. Nice job of being where he had to be. Now watch the pressure by man number 71. Man going against Mitchell. And of course we told you Dexter Manley and Man have 12 sacks apiece. They're good. Turnover duplicated. Play action pass by Schrader. He's going for it all. Art Monk intended receiver. That ball was airmailed about 60 yards. Like a rifle shot. Did you see that ball, Tom? He didn't even strain to throw that ball that far. It was just a shot out of like a, a magnum. Huh? Ray Ellis and Ronnell Young were looking at it. It carried past them, but it also overshot the receiver. And Art Monk is some receiver. You know, that shows me something, Tom. The last ball the youngster threw, the young quarterback threw, was intercepted. And they come out on first down and say, hey, go get him with a big one. That's confidence being shown in the quarterback by Joe Gibbs. Remember when Theismann left the game, the first thing the young guy did was throw a deep pass that yeah, night. Right. Second down and 10. Griffith is in the game. 
Griffin gets the misdirection to stop the line of scrimmage. Ray Ellis making the tackle. Let's go to Brent Musburger up in New York. Brent? Well, Brookie, in less than six minutes, the Bengals ran up 16 points on the Dallas Cowboys. Another turnover, and this 45-yarder from Boomer Esiason to Eddie Brown, the talented rookie from Miami. 16-0, can you believe it? Let's go back to Brookie and Dick. All right, Brent, and Dallas, of course, has got to lose their last three games for these two teams to be very important in a playoff. That's if these two teams win all of their last games. Everybody can't win. Third down and 11. Schrader, the blitz is on. Greg Brown, Greg Brown was first. The first sack for Philadelphia. Greg Brown is lined up on big Joe Jacoby. Joe's pass sets nicely, but Greg Brown beats him underneath. You'll see it. Direct your attention, see him now, watch him beat him underneath. Right, there he goes, right number 98. See, he's underneath, there he is. Young Jay Schroeder, Schrader it is, isn't it, Tom? Schrader. Didn't have a shot. Back to punt is Steve Cox. Cooper's waiting. This is a very high kick. Cooper's going to get it at about his 20. Cooper, look out. Cooper out of bounds at the 25. see here that the coverage was a little too intense didn't come to balance and they overrun it now he picks up a block by Ray Ellis number 24 he's in the open the punters being blocked by Wes Hopkins number 48 here comes Rich Mott 57 to get out Steve gets him out of bounds a 46 yard punt a 56 yard return and it looks like the Eagles are in business Ernest Jackson piling down with a 20 fumble turnovers and takeaways you watch the defense excuse me here watch them got it turned around watch the defense set up right over here as they attack you can see Steve Cox Steve Kenny right there and then the linebacker comes in and hits him the balls on the ground Curtis Jordan number 22 comes in and steals it Rich Malott forced it and suddenly the Redskins are playing like they did in Super Bowl years with 312 left there's no score Coach, he's beaten the Redskins last year, the, late in the year, and he's beaten them this year. Two he's times had. in a row. Two in a row. First and ten for Washington. Balls on the 22. Inside handoff. That's Rogers breaking out. Ellis. I believe that Wes Hopkins tackles him at the 32-yard line. A sure tackle. Or Rogers was gone, and he can go for the long run. Here's number 48 playing deep about 12 yards. Now watch this young man fill the run as a fine safety ought to fill the run. Nice handoff up. Now look at him attack. Boom, and he's hitting a big 225, 230 pound running back as nobody else can do it better, Tom. Looked like the Eagles stunted and got caught that time. Rogers hit burned him for 11 yards. It's a first and 10 now. Ball's out on the 33. Inside, pounding, goes George Rogers. Briggs made the tackle. Are the fumbles behind George Rogers now? Well, you know, he probably doesn't fumble any more than any other running back in the National Football League, but within the Redskin organization, as you mentioned earlier, Tom, you don't fumble a ball. You don't turn it over, and he's been fumbling once every 37 carries, where in contrast to Riggins, who fumbles once every 55, and that's a higher ratio than and Riggins normally do. They don't like to fumble a football. Second down and four. 30 yards on six carries for Rogers. Play action pass. Knocked away by Herman Edwards. Intended for number 84, Larry Clark. Boy, Edwards made some play on the ball. Herman Edwards is a fine defensive back. He's one of these free agent guys that's not supposed to be good enough, and here he is two interceptions away from bringing the all-time Eagle interceptor. He's playing with great confidence. I really believe he's playing better football today than he has ever played as a pro football player. 
just starting 133 consecutive games at right corner. I, I can tell you that's a tough thing to do. He's the oldest NFC quarterback playing. And well, third down and four. Redskins in their own territory. Schrader is going to be close to a first down. I don't think he made it, Tom. Ellis came up and put the shoulder pads to the young quarterback. He only threw 65 passes at UCLA. So yeah. he doesn't have a lot of experience. No, the last game he played at UCLA, which I think was his only start, was against USC, in which UCLA beat SC. And Terry Donnie, who told me just the other night at our Rose Bowl reunion, Tom, that the guy had a lot of talent, but he was a baseball player first, and he <laughs> missed he missed uh, pre uh, spring training. You know that spring, you know sure. how those spring practice sessions, and he always reported a long ways behind an experienced, good like Ramsey it was at that time, a good quarterback, and it, it took him most of the season to catch up. I got gotcha. you. His big hero and idol was Johnny Bench. And Johnny Bench didn't play football. He was an all-time catcher with the Reds. But this young man right now leaves the field about an inch or so short of the first. Steve He's, Cox is in the kick. He said his first love was baseball, and that's why he left college and went on into baseball. But he's happy he's playing football now because it's a better lifestyle. You don't travel and you're not gone and he, he has a wife and family and he likes being home more and he's really enjoying this. And being a catcher is tough anyway. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's any tougher than being a quarterback. <laughs> or a coach. Yeah. Cox is cutting. And of course, Cooper is waiting. Oh, oh. my goodness. There's a five and a half second hang time. Fair caught at the eight yard line by Cooper. And I'm not so sure about that one. A 52-yard punt, and Zilch on the return. No score. And you might play victory of C music behind this. Eagles got to win all of their last three and get 9-7, and then three of five things got to happen. Dallas has got to lose all three. The 49ers lose all three. Giants lose all three. Detroit's got to lose two or three, and Green Bay's got to lose one. That is cataclysmic. First and 10, Jaworski is 0 for 4 throwing. Jaworski going for it all and throws it away, really, as Mike Quick was double covered with the zone. They rolled up and went doubled on Mike Quick. They must have a tendency of the Eagles went in their computer uh, printouts and that stuff because they rolled up on first down, rolled over, and covered Mike Quick deep. Not a bad know, not on a bad first thing down, to do, huh? Coming out inside the 20 might be a tendency. Cincinnati 22, Dallas nothing. But, you know, they can turn it around the second half. They can score 22, too. James Brooks scored on a 27-yard run for Cincinnati. Second down, 10. Hand off to Jackson. Good defensive play by Dexter Manley. I believe it was Manley, or maybe it was Malott on that side. Rich Malott making a real good I play on the line of scrimmage. St. Louis leading New Orleans 7-0. Young Phillips is going to find that fame is fleeting. Yeah. Miami 6, Green Bay 3 now in the first quarter. Boy, Miami did some job with the Chicago Bears. I think as the guard pulled and the center block back, I think Neil Oakwood shot the gap and went in there and raised heck from behind. Third down and 12. The ball's on the 5. Shotgun. Here they come. Jaworski under throw at the 10-yard line. Kenny Jackson. And... Vernon Dean had him covered like a blanket. Did a nice job. Vernon Dean has been playing good pass defense all year. He has five pass interceptions coming into this football game and 20 in a career, so you know he can play pass defense. Jaworski is 0 for 6. You're looking at Michael Horan, who's making his third punt. Here's the time to evaluate what kind of punter you are. I've been around so many punters that do it super at the 40-yard line, but when you're standing back there with your rear end to the goal post, it's a good gut check. <laughs> Washington will have good position. Kenny Jenkins is at midfield. And Iran is in the shadows. He gets a pretty good kick out. Jenkins at the 47-yard line of Philadelphia. Jenkins to the 33-yard line. And flags are dropping. Major Everett making the tackle. A 42-yard punt. A 14-yard Jenkins return. But Frederick's going to tell us somebody did something awful as usual in the kicking game you know that Kenny Jenkins took the ball and he really attacked 
the coverage. He went, took him on. You know, he has seven punt returns over 15 yards to his credit this year. He's an ex-Eagle. Next lion <laughs> Holding on Washington. Jenkins somewhat hurt. He's back in that group now on the Redskins sideline. In the shadow, I might add, Marion Campbell moved the Eagles bench to the sunshine. And on an afternoon like today, it makes a difference. There's the Swamp Fox. See Marion give those signals, see him cross those arms? That's 30 zone. Is that what that 30 is? zone, yeah. And don't miss on it, right? <laughs> the Eagles on defense again, but the ball is back at least at the 49-yard line. So the penalty really helped him. George Rogers, the lone back. A sprint out by Schrader, complete to the 40-yard line. As Clint Didier fell down, Boy, he does hum it. You almost have to have onions put on the hamburger when he puts it on your hand. Do you notice how Jay Schroeder sprinted out to his right that time? That gives the pass rush a real problem. It breaks the definition of the pocket. End of one, there's no score. Tom Brookshire and Dick Vermeil at Veterans Stadium. Coach, you want to talk about that last pass? Right. You know, you notice that the quarterback sprinted out and threw the ball from over there. Rather than going straight back, that breaks the definition for the pass rush. Now, watch him get out there. No pressure on him. Brings up a second one. Live action as Rodgers runs left. Runs into Brown. And may have lost a little bit trying for that first down. Rodgers, it was interesting yesterday, I said, you like to run to the right more than you like to run to the left. And he stopped, and then he said... Yes, I'd like to run to the right side better because I'm a cutback runner. But you know, if I were him, I'd want to run to the left because that's where big Joe Jacoby is at 305 pounds and Russ Grimm. And I'm not sliding Ken Huff and Mark May, but there's a, you know, where's the beef? It's over on the left side. <laughs> Third down and a foot. If there has been a crucial play so far, this would be it. Short yardage offense. Inside, Rogers makes it inside the 35 to the 34 and almost broke away for a big one. Now, if the Redskins drive, if they rush the ball over 30 times, what's their one loss record when they do that? Well, they have won 46 games, Tom, believe it or not, and lost six when they have run the ball 30 times or more. When they've run less than 30 times, <laughs> they are one win and 13 losses. My. Don't allow those guys to run if you're going to beat them. So you got to get on the scoreboard early and make them pass. That's hard to do. First down and 10. The Skins have 59 yards rushing already. Rodgers barrels inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Well, Brookie, it is now more points than ever scored against the Dallas Cowboys in the first quarter. James Brooks hauls it in, 27 yards out, 22 nothing. They're human. They miss an extra point. Let's go back to Brookie. Wow. The most points ever scored against Dallas. And, of course, I, I guarantee you fans of both teams, of the Redskins, if you bet. they are glad that this is happening to <laughs> see today. No score here after one. We've got 13.05 left before halftime. Second down, two. Rogers. First down. A Kenny. big running back, the Heisman Award winner a couple of three years ago. Played for New Orleans. You know, this guy broke a 73-yarder for us uh, for New Orleans when I was coaching against him. And, it, I mean, I just, <laughs> you couldn't believe the big guy could run that fast. Yeah, I know it. And that long. Kenny Jenkins, the very fine return man, has a separated shoulder and obviously is out of action. A first down 10 now. The Redskins with a legitimate drive going. Schrader, the outside, to Gary Clark. Good recovery. Clark tackled at about the 20 by Cobb. That was a good acquisition the Eagles had, getting Gary Cobb at that linebacking spot. It was. It was you know, Montgomery. Right. He's played well for him. And then, of course, Joel Williams, number 59, the... The guy that normally holds out a training camp, you know, like he did at Atlanta, and then he did here. Uh, he's playing well there. That was a quick screen, and Cobb really had to react to get out there. Wearing those strange Kareem Abdul-Jabbar-type glasses. Boy, he's a good football player. Second down and seven. High formation. Now Warren leaves. Here's the sprint out left by Schrader. Edwards breaks it up at the 10-yard line intended for Gary Clark. 
again, Tom, that ability of the quarterback to roll out like that and get out there where there's no pressure on him. Now watch the quarterback as he comes out and sprints out here rather than being back here where all the rush zeroes in on him. Now watch, you can't do it all the time, Tom, but you can change up with it. Tight end Warren going in motion. Now here he comes sprinting out there. The only people in front of him now are his own teammates. Herman Edwards does a nice job of pass defense. Third down and seven. No score so far. Schrader is three of eight. A lot of noise. The blitz. It's caught by Didier. was there to tackle him. What a throw off balance by the young quarterback because Ellis was right in his face. There's a penalty on this too, Tom, and that could move the field goal range back. Didier is some target though at 6'6", and he still has good 40-yard speed. He was Lomax's favorite receiver, wasn't he, back at Portland State? Portland State College, yes, and he, you know, he has real good ability. He caught 67 balls his senior year alone at Portland State. Now, maybe Offensive you and I would have caught 67, too. I don't know. 61. I don't know the caliber of competition at Portland State, but there's two pretty darn good football players I coming bet. out of there. Mouse Davis was the coach. That's Kenny Huff, number 61, detected for holding. And as anybody that watches pro football knows, you could damn near call on everybody on every play. There's a big critical thing right here. The young quarterback cannot get sacked. Here, he's already in field goal range. He doesn't want to make it any longer, and he doesn't want to throw that interception. Third down and 17. The young man that threw 58 times against San Francisco a week ago. Out of bounds, over the end line, incomplete. Art Muck covered by Ellis. Ellis and Elbert Fowles, number 29 there. A good throw, but the field was just a little too short. Watch the safety as he works to help inside out on the slot man to the left of your screen. Now watch. Nice pedal back technique by the quarterback. Used. He throws it down the seam. Hits the post. Look at the movement of the safety. Fouts is actually beaten, and here comes the safety over to help him. Good coverage. Mosley has missed two. He's five of seven from this distance. Going to be short left. kickers of all time misses from 47 and so with 11 one left before halftime in Philadelphia there's still no score Redskins have got to win their last three games to go 10-6 and one of the following has got to happen they've got to get 9-7 finishes out of Dallas Rams 49ers or the Giants in order to get there. A first down and 10 for Jaworski. He has to complete the pass. He still has. I believe Mann got part of the ball or Dave Butts. Jaworski is now 0 for 7. You're going to see here big butts right here. Excuse the expression. And Mann getting up there and getting pressure. And one of those two guys tipped the football. What you call him? Big butt? Big butts. You know what? He gets his hands up right there. It was Dave Butts, number 65. Is he a powerful man? He loves your duck decoys. He carves them himself, but you better not call him Big Butt. <laughs> Straight ahead goes Michael Haddock. Maybe a yard, and it just appears to me that the Redskin defense has strapped it on today. They look like they are aggressive and getting more so. I'll tell you, too. Dave Butts can set the tempo for that defense. He's the leader in, in terms of experience and years, and when his motor is running, you don't run. <laughs> well, I'd say he dents the guard's helmets. I'll tell you. <laughs> you do your guard no favor. He's alone. In preparing him to play Dave Butts. <laughs> and Baker is a good offensive guard, but he's having a battle. It's third down and seven. You saw the yardage difference, but there is no score. Jaworski from the shotgun. He's got time. That's Michael Quick. There are no flags. Daryl Green, a world-class sprinter, covered Michael Quick.
Mike Quick is there. Now watch it. He's going to be tight, bump and run coverage. They're up there. He has safety help behind him. Comes off. They try to get him picked right there. They don't get the pick executed, which is not a legal play. So I guess it wasn't a pick, right, Tom? <laughs> Good coverage by Daryl Green. Fine defensive play. Smart defensive play by the entire unit, and they're getting better. Daryl Green, the speedster, is waiting for Haran's punt. This Lousy is not punt. a good kick. A bad snap, too. The snap pulled him away, and the Redskins are putting the pressure on. They'll start from the 40-yard line. Haran had to jump for the snap and then hurried it. A 27-yard punt. Now watch the punter as he stands way back here. His concentration is broken because it's a high snap. Now watch him have to go up there and play center field. Now that breaks his concentration. He doesn't get it put down nicely, punched it poorly. Good break for the Redskins, Tom. Good field position at 40-yard line. And we can't say it enough. We probably say it too often, but special teams play is so important. Whether Mosley makes that field goal or doesn't to get on the board first, uh, Good coverage of punts. Everything. Oh, yeah. No, and you know something? Two of the best special teams coaches in football are on the field today. In the Redskin special team coach, Wayne Seaver, and then Frank Gans for the Eagles. Excellent coaches. Don't forget, next Saturday, CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA basketball continues with St. John's taking on UCLA. That's right. St. John's has the All-American Walter Berry, and they beat the heck out of the Bruins a year ago. But they're playing out at Pauley Pavilion. And only my former UCLA coach knows what that means. Hazard's team will be fired up next it's, Saturday. That's a great atmosphere to be the home team in, but not to be the visitor. And to have Johnny Wooden just come and sit down and watch yeah. your team play. Yeah, right? there's, there's an image of him and a, uh, almost a ghost of him here all the time. He's such a dynamic man. I watched Walt Hazard uh, playing his, his high school ball before he went to UCLA. He's from Philadelphia. But right now, there's no score on the game, but if there's an advantage tempo-wise, you would just sort of lean toward the men in Burgundy right now. Maybe Schrader hasn't gotten it on track yet. Yeah, you know, he, I said, how different is it for you in preparation for a game? He says, well, Coach, I'll tell you, one of the most obvious things is that I am now on the practice film rather than Joe. I see <laughs> myself all week. Jerry Rome used to really work with him by himself on a one-on-one -on -one basis within the offensive game plan, and Jerry Rome's a fine quarterback coach. He said, I'm also a lot sore, more sore on Monday. <laughs> if I was shooting a, a movie about the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe in World War II, he would be my main character. <laughs> Schrader under the tee on first and 10 on the 40. Here's the misdirection handoff to George Rogers. Rogers bucks to the 49-yard line. And Kenny Clark had to hold on. Nice block by the offensive left guard here as he pulls and traps, and the big tackle pulls and cleans up. Now, you're talking about big people. There he, Rogers steps, allows the people to get over there. Now, look, big Joe Jacoby at 305 pounds, open up that hole. That's a physical mismatch, Tom, oh. when he gets over there. And he pulls very well for a man that size. Second down, and call it a long one. 61 yards already for the man from South Carolina. down not by much let's go to new york now brent keep us updated buddy all right rookie well the lions are on the road so it must be the other guys scoring points right and here's tony easton from the shotgun to Derek ramsey 14-3 patriots lead the lions let's go back to brookie and dick vermeer oh and new england though rolling on toward the playoffs in the afc they're a good squad and they've got a lot of fine people playing for them don't oh they do there's two outside linebackers that they have are, are as good as a pair of the league uh, first and ten now just into eagle territory the sprint by schrader completes a didier at the 40. ellis was there but didier protected and caught it Kenny Clark did a real nice job of getting pressure inside out on that draw play. Oh, the Jets, 14 zip on Buffalo. Huh? They bounced back from going to Detroit. Anybody who goes to Detroit must get to Maine or something. They lose up there. Cincinnati beating the heck out of Dallas. Not yet at halftime there. Indianapolis, Chicago. 3-3. Three, three, three. Hey. 21-7, Kansas City over Atlanta. 14-3. Hannaford and that team, still a dangerous club when they're hurt. Second down and two. Rogers belts off inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. 
Nice block by Big Joe Jacoby and the fullback. Big Joe Jacoby right here getting a nice block. And then the fullback up here getting a nice block. Here you go. Man in motion to distract. Linebackers slide. Now, deep handoff. Good block by Jacoby. See him lock up that linebacker. Good job by the Mr. Warren playing fullback there as a tight end. Look at Jacoby. Jacoby. 14 carries for Rodgers already and a couple more by Schrader. So they've rushed for 18 times already today. Inside handoff, Rogers storms inside that left side, inside the 30 before he stacked up there. They went banging up inside that time rather than going outside that tackle. They make you stretch, widen you, then all of a sudden they get up in there. And Kenny Clark is playing the run this year about as well as any nose guard in football that I've seen on film. Kenny Clark is number 71, the Eagle nose guard. Tell me why the rush is so important, even if it doesn't have a lot of yardage. The teams that rush over 30 or 40 times win all the time. Is that a, is there a why there? Well, uh, we'll have to get to it after this play. Okay. All right, second down and six. The cross is out there. Rogers hit and drop short of the 25-yard line. Greg Brown coming up, and I saw Wes Hopkins move into the flow even before the ball was snapped, so they were reading frequency there. Tom, by controlling the football, running it pounding in there and keeping that line of scrimmage clean you also help your pass offense by making it more efficient because you're ahead of down and distance and the defense isn't playing pass defense they're playing run defense and now you throw the other thing is though you've got to score though otherwise you're using up your own clock while you're controlling the ball without points that, that can happen and it does happen but you more often not get the big play out of the passing game all right big play here third down and three on a 26 a lot of time. Art Mutt. It's good at the two-yard line. Art Mutt made a great grab, and that ball was right there, and Warnell Young just couldn't get to the ball. Art Mutt could. You'll see movement from the left of your screen. Number 85 coming in motion. Now, as the quarterback drops back, he'll look to his left in a pedal technique, looking to his left. Now he finds the man going to the corner. Here it is going to the corner. Nice catch. Gets both pass. feet down. He's inbound. Six men only on the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation as the Redskins only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Tom, you know something? From up here and having a good angle, about three other times in the ball game, they've had that kind of thing. Here's the six people. One, two, three three four five six and evidently the one wide receiver that's supposed to be on the line of scrimmage was back off too far and i have seen that already about three or four times sometimes the motion man doesn't get quite up to the line of scrimmage huh right interpretation of the rules you know what you do with a guy that's not lined up properly as a wide receiver you shoot him when he comes <laughs> off the field third down and eight a big penalty for the redskins Incomplete, intended for Art Monk coming across the middle, but Kenny Clark was right in the young quarterback's face. Schrader Art, at number 71, looking him right in the eye. This guy has been in the, a thorn in Philadelphia Eagles' side uh, many years. I've sat here and watched him go up and down the field, and you just want to reach out and tackle the guy. And because of my competition against the Redskins, and now looking at him as, a, as an analyst, I've gained tremendous respect for that organization, Tom. Steve Cox is holding. Mosley's trying a 48-yarder. Here's the kick. It's up. It's Cox trying it, not Mosley, and he misses also. He's mad, too, and he's the distance kicker. He has kicked a 60-yarder before. You can see him hit this when he hits it nice, and I'll tell you something, Tom, in this stadium, you're more apt to kick the long field goal kicking the other way than you are to this open end tunnel end. Guess what, Dick? No score. 6.22 left before halftime, and Ron Jaworski, who has 11 300-yard passing days, is 0 for 8 and has no yards. Straight ahead goes Ernest Jackson to the 33 yard line. Ernest had 160 some odd yards rushing against St. Louis. You know, Tom, you were talking about Jaworski's 11 
300 yard plus throwing uh, games which is an NFL an Eagle record excuse me you know of those 11 the Eagles won three of them. Throwing for 300 yards is a great individual stat, but not a real important team stat. Better to rush the ball 40 times, isn't it? <laughs> the numbers last week on Rod. The quick draw play. Outside now, Jackson gets cut back inside and gets to the 37. Lucky to make the line of scrimmage and added a couple of yards. Malott headed him off. Ernest Jackson laid, led the AFC in rushing a year ago and somehow came back to San Diego and they didn't have him listed on the three deeps. <laughs> 1,179 yards. He's one of those guys that's not flashy. He's consistent. He plays well every week. And he has those short, choppy steps and he keeps working up the field and all of a sudden he's got 90 yards. And he's found new life. Philadelphia. Third down and four. Jaworski's the, the tailback in this case. Out of the shotgun. In and out of the hands of John Spagnola. Closely covered by number 51, Monty Coleman. Good job there by the linebacker. I know Joe Gibbs always felt that Monty Coleman was one of the better pass defense linebackers in all of the National Football League. He was injured part of the year with a hamstring problem, but now that he's back in full speed, you can see he's playing well. Remember, he beat you with the interception Ooh, here a few don't years ago, did he? Don't say those things. Haran, long kicking to Darrell Green. Green at the 10. He's gone. He won't catch him. I can't. flag on the field and they're going to call it back Daryl Green went 90 yards with a punt return and Marion Campbell is breathing again what a punt return for an apparent touchdown and Gibbs sees it washed blown off the books you know he was a fine punt returner in college. The hands. number 48 on the kick return team oh that's tough i think we'll be able to see this coming from the right of the screen now daryl tucks it away now remember this guy's a world-class sprinter and a fine punt returner in his own right he makes a miss john good 84 now right I still don't see it. I thought I might see it there, but I haven't seen it. He called number 48 as making the block from behind. Right now, Marion Campbell is thinking, whoo, offense. <laughs> still no score. I really don't see Greg Williams committing a foul. They called it 48, but it was 47. Now, they said he hit him right in the back right there. Oh, come you on. You can see it right here. What it looks play. like he actually misses the man. <laughs> Love I don't, I don't think it was a good call. Watch that block right there. Barry Wilburn, number 45, does a nice job, and so does Otis Wansley, number 39. Let him play football. Contact, incidental contact like that's not going to kill anybody. Oh. Anyway, a great return, only the third punt return for, for young Green all year, and one of the most exciting, and it's called back. The Eagles' defense is out there, and the ball is on the 10-yard line. First and 10. Incredible. Schrader looking quickly outside. A couple of yards. Art Monk tackled by Ronell Young quickly. Philadelphia only has 22 yards offensively. The Redskins have over a hundred and over 125 yards. This is sort of like their 49er game last week when they dominated that first half statistically and found themselves behind. At least today, it's still even. And nobody ran back the opening kickoff. Right? No score here in Philadelphia. Second down 10. High formation. The draw play to Griffin. A 
that's George Rogers back at the two yard line. Reggie White making first contact and he had help. You're going to see right here, Mark May is going to set and try to get Reggie White to come outside. I kind of think the tailback went out there a little too wide on the draw play. See the tailback, Rogers, 38. Now, there it is. See, I think he should have broke it up inside, and that made that offensive tackle look bad. It will be third and 13. There you're looking at the 285-pounder who says he wants a training camp, and then he's going to be good. He's great now. Schrader from the end zone. It will be a safety. It will be a safety, and the Eagles have scored first. The Eagles have scored first. Reggie White. You can see right here as the defensive backs are playing here, he had nobody to throw the football to. Good coverage on the part of the Eagle defense. Everybody covered. Hold it right there. Hold it right. Stop it. Freeze it. You can see he's covered. You can see these people are in position. He'd have to throw it over his head. No one to throw the ball to. Therefore, the sack. Did they call it in the grass? His problem is back here. See, there he's looked. There's a pressure right there. I think they called him in the grass. What did they call, Tom? Well, I think they illegally tried to unload the ball to avoid losing yardage. It could be, it could be penalized for a safety, yeah. and that's what it was. That is Reggie White's 11th sack in 11 games, the young rookie playing defensive left end for the Eagles. And young Schrader's having a tough day. They will free kick now without being uh, inhibited. But every time I've seen a safety, it usually results in nine points. The other team usually takes advantage and comes down and gets a real kicker, a, a scores a touchdown. Tom, did we mention that when the opponent scores first against the Redskins, statistically, they have won five and lost 13? Any kind of a score against them any first? Any kind of score first. I mean, I, I shouldn't say safety because I don't know how many safeties have ever been scored against the Redskins. It's 2-0 Philadelphia, and Steve Cox will free kick from behind the 20. And Hunter Waters and Cooper White. Not a good punt. Taken by number 20, Waters. Waters to the 46-yard line. Man, it is raging back and forth. Don't forget, on CBS next Saturday, it all starts with the NFL today with Legends of the Game. As Irv Cross, our old teammate and our buddy, explores the history of the Monsters of the Midway. That's right. Chicago from the late Bill George to Mike Singletary. Saturday on the NFL today. And, of course, the Chicago Bears and the Jets. Boy, that's two good games and a great show here on CBS. First and 10 from the 46. Jaworski, first completion. A nine-yarder to Spagnola. The first completion for number seven. Offensive linemen here do a pretty good job of protecting Ron on the play-action pass. He actually wanted to go deep. Spagnola hooked up in the zone. Vernon Dean had rolled up. Now watch Vernon Dean appear to the left here and make the play. Oh, we didn't get it all the way over there. Excuse me. Here's Spagnola eight, second down and two. 251 left before halftime. A wild and woolly game. Jackson gets the first down by about his helmet. A two-nothing score, a safety. When young Schrader couldn't get the ball to a receiver and Reggie White had him by the throat. I this, guess this series has been this way. It's been sort of pillar to post since I can remember. I've been involved in many of these. Dexter Manley is just coming out. I think he hurt his ankle or got kicked in the shins. Boy, they can't afford to lose Dexter Manley. He's their best defensive end. Beasley is in there in place of Manley, number 67. First and 10. Jaworski throwing a lot. The screen pass. Washington. Washington was waiting for it. And Jaworski wasted the pitch.
Dexter Manley is in the right defensive end here in the left corner of your screen. Now watch him, he's coming up field. He gets blocked, he gets off the block. Now he goes down right there on his ankle and it apparently gave away as he pressured off that right foot. Boy, what a good defensive play though for that time. The Redskins are so good at frequencies. They smell the screen and Jaworski just had to safely get the ball out of there. Tom, I think actually somebody grabbed the running back as he was up inside and tried to release. I saw Jaworski squawking like mad. Second down and 10. The Eagles only have two first downs, but they lead 2-0. Jaworski, second completion to Quick. About the 27. Vernon Dean was there. 158 left before a halftime. Jaworski has completed two. Team, now you'll watch how they stunt here. And Malott, number 57, stumps there. And at the same time, the offensive linemen slide nicely and pick this up. That's not easy to do, Tom. It takes a lot of work. See the guard now pick him up there. Steve Kenny, number 73, picks up Malott. Therefore, completion downfield. Boy, you showed us a great bit of football, my man. Thank you very much. Hey, Nobody does it better, Dick. Dexter's back in. They need this guy. He's one of the fine pass rushers. In fact, didn't we put him on our all-pro team? Yeah, we're going to unveil that at halftime. It's a 2 nothing score, a safety. for Philadelphia is third down and three. Shotgun. And we got back. Jaworski going for a receiver. Oh, it's off the fingertip. Michael Quick thought he was interfered with. Here's a guy with 1,000-yard years receiving three times in a row for Michael Quick. You're going to see number 37 right here coming up and work in and get the safety blitz, getting good pressure on him now. 37, Raphael Cherry. See him getting up there. They're getting heat on him. Had enough time to lay it up over the outside shoulder here. But great pass defense again, and just off the fingertips of Mike Quick. McFadden will try a 44-yarder. He is four of five, and the little barefooted kicker is one of the very best. It is good. There's that little scuffed up foot. <laughs> but he is some classy kicker. Tom, didn't you tell me that his foot was bleeding at the practice field the other day when you watched it? It was bleeding on the instep. I mean, openly bleeding and oozing blood. And he covered it up and he just kicked a 44-yarder. The thing to keep in mind that with a safety and a field goal, five points, it's five points will make the multiple so strange that by the fourth quarter, you've got some crazy combinations that can pull a game out for yeah, you. Yeah, you bet. Did you see the bandage on that? Yeah, shot right there on his foot, covering up the open wound. From Youngstown State, where Jaworski went to school. That's got to hurt a bit, doesn't it? Uh, and, not not for those kickers. It's either that or get into the van and go to the next town. <laughs> Especially when it's cold out there. He was voted the best special teams player for the Eagles this year at the Bakers Club Banquet in Philadelphia. He accepted, and boy, he is really a solid citizen. He still calls me Mr. Brookshire, which makes me feel like an antique, which I certainly am. But you know, you meet the guy and shake hands with him, you think he's the guy that's teaching Sunday school at the local church. You know, he doesn't look like an NFL football player. <laughs> Griffin is waiting for it, and here's McFadden's kickoff. Griffin at the 10-yard line. Hit hard, but get through people to the 31. Keith Griffin with a good return, finally stopped by Andre Waters. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Brent Irv and John Madden, the coach, is there with scores and highlights. Back from the New York studio, plus an interview with Johnny Robinson and the Rams. And, boy, they're taking a lot of heat right now. All of this and more yeah, coming are. up at halftime. Also, uh, Dick Vermeil and I will pick the people that we have thought were the best we saw in the NFC as sort of an all-conference team. Andre Waters was a little shook up on that play. Number 20 made a good tackle, and Griffin was trying to get it up the middle and break to the outside. 143 left. You see the insert in, on your screen. Keith Griffin is in there. Trader. Complete to Gary Clark. Knocked out of bounds before he could get to the first down, but he did stop the clock. Boy, does he fire that football time. This guy is a really... You know, I was actually a gamble to take a guy that had one start in college, 
and, your, and use your third round pick. You know, that really was a, a gutsy, gutsy call by the Redskin organization. And you know, when Joe Theismann is your quarterback, you never think about an injury because Joe is the most durable quarterback that I can ever remember. So if I were coaching Joe, I would never even think about him being hurt. <laughs> you know, it would scare me. I wouldn't sleep at night. And you know, Schrader never thought about it either. Second down and two. First down. As Keith Griffin somehow bounced around like a BB, almost gets to midfield. You know, the Eagles are playing a, a prevent type defense right now, all playing zone, and the Redskins are doing a nice job of stopping up in those zones. How long will they stay with the short patterns before they go ahead and try to airmail it? I don't know. I think they'll stay with them right here. First and ten. Here's coming across the middle, Art Monk. Monk at the 37 yard line. The timeout's being called quickly by young Schrader. Good job. You could hear the coaches on the sideline yelling, time out, time out. And the young man got it called. A 15-yard reception. Art Monk broke the record with over 100 receptions in this league. Oh, I know it. It's amazing. You know, these two receivers combined, Gary Clark and Art Monk, the two starting receivers for the Redskins, are the number one pair in the NFL in that they have 125 receptions between the two. That's the a lot of catches. The combo, huh? Yeah. That's a lot of catches. Look at this. Art Monk, Gary Clark, number one in the NFL with 125. Starworth and Lips, number two with 114. And Hill and Renfro, number three. Art Monk and Gary Clark. And young Clark is some kind of a find. They lost Charlie Brown when they traded him to Atlanta for different reasons. Yeah, he cut 56 balls in the USFL and, and did a good job in 155 balls in college. So he knows how to catch the football. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the guy they let go, downtown Charlie Brown. Yeah, that's true. Charlie Brown, I just found that he couldn't share the ego, I think, with, uh, with Art Monk. I think that Charlie just really wanted to get a little bit more recognition. No, I think he just wanted to play more. And remember, they went with the receiver from the Raiders. And I think that called some problems. I wouldn't doubt that the Redskins would love to have Charlie Brown back right now. <laughs> Both of those Raider receivers are are already released from this ball club. No, I think one's on injured reserve and the other's learning a go pattern somewhere. Right. <laughs> That's right. First down and 10 now, 107 on the clock. And the Redskins have got to get on the board somehow before halftime. Schrader's got time, complete the Monk. Monk dragging Herm Edwards inside the Eagle 20. Good looking throw by the quarterback. And the second timeout is burned. A 17 yard advance. Now who would be the field goal kicker? Would it be Mosley or Cox? It would be Mosley here. Now take a look at this monk in the middle of your screen number 80. Well let them get a shake and break and now watch him come back to the ball. Right in front of Herman Edwards to the right middle of your screen. Nice job of running the pass route and good pass defense. That ball more often than not Tom has to be defended from the underneath with a linebacker. And remember, there's Mosley now. He's one of the great kickers, as we said, of all time. But the range has gone. He will get a pretty short shot at this. You know, that guy used to drive me crazy. That's why I respect him. It's, I think, by gosh, we're going to beat these guys. And he would step in, so help me God, and hit the longest field goal of his career on that time. And he used to be an eagle I, oh, years ago before yeah. they traded him away or yeah. cut him. So it's like, sounds like some of the great decisions I made, you know? <laughs> An MVP in the National Football League. Mosley is the only kicker ever to have that honor. Don't forget next Sunday, the NFL today starts at off. Then the Giants against Dallas. Neither team can lose that, right? The Eagles go to San Diego and see Dan Fouts and company. Minnesota against Atlanta. Check your local listings because CBS is where the NFL is. Tom, let me love. throw one at you. Yeah. You know that the Eagles, no fault or maybe no credit to their own, but the opponent has missed. I think more field goals kicking against the Eagles than any other team in football. I think they only made, what, uh, 16 field goals? Yeah, I know. Huh? And the, what, the other thing is that their pass defense is like second in the NFL. Yeah. They're not easy to throw against either. Yeah. First and 10, Schrader is 8 of 17 and one interception. Schrader, dumpy. Sidney is nailed at the 15-yard line. A great defensive play by Fowles. He read the safety blitz that time and got it off. Didier lost his shoe, but the clock is running. The Redskins do have one timeout left. They don't want to use it now. You see the safety coming right there. Second down six. Schrader throwing the ball away. 
Good that, job by Schrader, Tom. Now remember, the Eagles have scored twice, but they've only scored two and three points. It's only a five-nothing deficit. So you'll gladly take the field goal and still be very close. I don't know if I've ever seen a half where you could take a field goal and be within two points. I've coached a few of those. <laughs> I've coached a few of those. That's good defense. You bet both teams are playing super defense. And actually, the Redskins have moved the ball real well, but they haven't gotten anything out of the passing game. And that's what they're going to have to get out of, uh, get going at halftime when they make some adjustments. Remember the year they went to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago? They, had, they were a plus 43 in turnovers. That was the Super Bowl of 82, was it not? Yeah, and this year they're a minus eight coming into this game. Third down and six. Bring on Mosley. Here they come. Redskins did a nice job of using the clock within that series. Now, they still have 23 seconds left in that. You know, they didn't have much time. The young quarterback did a nice job. Mosley kicking how far, Tom? Well, it's going to be, a, looks like about a 32-yard 32 32 field goal attempt. 32-yarder. Well, he's five for holding. seven. Five for seven this year from that distance. That's a new holder. It's good. I feel like we're playing cribbage. <laughs> With 20 seconds left in the first half, Gibbs' team is on the board, and they only trail by two. This looks like the World Series score, huh? <laughs> But Washington doesn't have a baseball team, do they? That's right. But I'll tell you, young Schrader's been putting the test to Marion Campbell's team. A safety and a field goal. And now an answering field goal by Mark Mosley, Mr. Dependable. And the Philadelphia, really a landmark that went to Washington and has become one of the great kickers of all time. He really has been. I just, I used to hate to see the guy come on the field because it seemed like he would have his best day against me and in preparation for the game I'd look at the special teams reel and he just missed one that could have won the game the week before but you know something Dallas felt that way too every team felt like it did the best to get them you know that reminds me of a story I'm in this field one time against the Redskins and Horse Woolman has a chance to kick a field goal at the end to tie it up for us and I say Horsey what do you think he says coach why don't we try a fake <laughs> <laughs> needless to say he missed the darn thing you're right. Mosley always wanted the chance to Mosley, win a game. Yeah, he's done a great job in that situation. You know, he's won four games in overtime, and he's won 11 in the last seconds of a ball game within his career. That's yeah. great clutch kicking. Cox now will kick off. He's the long kickoff man. And I would imagine he'll kick it deep and just keep anything strange from happening. It's a pretty average kick. This is going to be run back by Herman Hunter. Ooh, ooh. Hunter still on his feet somehow at the 30-yard line. What a I hit. mean, he was cracked by Hamilton, number 64. Did he give him a shot? I could feel that one all the way up here. Nobody's getting away without getting hit in Philadelphia today. That's getting a little cloudy and cooler. Follow the running back as he starts approaching his wedge. See, he's got it tucked away now. He goes right up and boom, right there. You could just huh. see his helmet darn near get knocked off. But this guy stays on his feet. You know, I saw him return two kickoffs for touchdowns in the preseason. Fine player. Uh, first and 10 for Jaworski. The ball is on the 30. Haddox and Hunter in the game on shotgun time. That's Hunter. Running. Gets. 12 yards before he's forced out at the 42. The old shotgun sweep. The Eagles still have three timeouts. Now, if you're the Eagle coach, or if you're just a coach, are you thinking points now, or are you just going to go in and get uh, taped up? With seven seconds to go, I would be thinking just uh, eating up the clock, to be honest. Don't throw the ball down there and uh, do something stupid, because they might hit the one play if they got it back right away, Tom. I think Marion's... Uh, taking a very intelligent approach right here and he has people over here in the press box guiding him as well and Sid Gilman and you know talking and that kind of stuff the swamp box is into it he's got a lead right now from the shotgun to run again a pass out of it it's completed to Kenny Jackson but they were calling him in the grass bar Herman Hunter tried to pass to end one of the the daffiest, dizziest first halves I've ever seen. 
at the half. It's coming off the five. Shops in America. Burger King. Aren't you hungry for Burger King, Herb? And by Apple Computer, makers of the Macintosh and Apple II families of first... ...for the Eagles with his bare foot out here, and it's beginning to get to be about 40 degrees and a little clamp, a clammy down here in the stadium, but the Eagles will kick off, and Keith Griffin is the lone safety man, the runback man for the Redskins. He's going to get it at about the goal line. Griffin upended at the 21-yard line. And there's some crazy numbers right here to look at. First downs, 10 to 3. Rushing, 94 yards rushing. Already the uh, Redskins have rushed 21 times. They normally win when they get over that 30 category. Plus, I think, Tom, the Redskins have won something like 23 in a row when a running back has won, run for 100 yards. And Rodgers has been productive at 76 yards in the He's first half. He's got 76 in the first half, so there are a lot of old hexes to be broken perhaps this young quarterback jay schrader in his third start is a man to do it it's first and ten right at the 20. misdirection handoff to rogers picks up five yards make it six on his own great effort by the big running back redskins running him over to the left on that counter play pulling the backside guard and backside tackle doing a nice job five to three a safety when young Schrader was tackled by Reggie White in the end zone, or almost tackled. And then a field goal, of course, by the young kicker, McFadden, of 44 yards, made it five. And Mosley tacked one on for the Redskins just before halftime. That's where we are. Second down and four. Not close to the first down. May have gotten the line of scrimmage and a half a yard. Reggie White making the tackle. This is why you have to be physically strong when you play that nose tackle position. And this guy, Kenny Clark, can bench press about 450 pounds. Look at him hang in there and hold ground and allow the people to rally and make the play. Good job, Kenny Clark. He also forced one of those bad passes, you know, from that nose spot, and that's hard to do yeah. in a pass rushing situation for a nose tackle. He's a free agent out of Syracuse and a good guy. Third down and two for visiting Redskins. Did he get the first down? It's going to be close. I don't think he made it. His head and helmet are over the line, but the ball is just short of the 30. He had to get there. This man has had his team in the Super Bowl two of the last four. And I remember doing his, in that crazy first season of his, when they were 0-5, I did the last loss to San Francisco before they turned it all around. He's as good a football coach as there is in the National Football League. Who's to say who the best is? But I, if when you talk about the best, you have to put his name and his staff in that category. In fact, you have to put the whole organization in that category. I know, and I like the way he treats his veterans. He makes the young people flat beat him out. Cox is kicking. It's off the side of his foot. That's a return by ball. The return by Cooper. Oh, good tackle put on Cooper short of the 40-yard line. Otis Wansley, he really gets after him. Wansley down under quickly, a 34-yard punt and an abrupt three-yard return. He's leading, Otis Wansley, number 39, is leading the Redskins in total hits on the punt coverage team with 14. He likes to get after people, that guy. We picked him as our all-coverage man, didn't we, on yeah. our special team? Our all-pro special team player. He's about number one or number two in everything they ask him to do in the special teams. First and ten for the Eagles. It's on the 40. Everybody held. They almost broke. Jaworski completes it. That's the fullback rambling inside the Washington 45. He ran a little out and then delayed back underneath as I saw it, Tom. Let the zone defense drop that time. I think they're actually a little bit concerned about Mike Quick being in that slot and going deep. Jaworski, who only was two of 13, two completions in the first half, just completed a 17-yarder. It's first and 10 on the 43. Misdirection handoff to Jackson. Oh, good defensive play. Dexter Manley made some play, number 72. A loss of a couple. 
He just stacked it all up, and the guy couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Big Dexter getting after him. He, he normally plays really wide. See him out here now. Uh, Dexter Manley, let's see. I've come locating him on my screen to my right. He's out wide, and he gets good penetration. And therefore, the running back can't get... Now, watch. You'll see him to the right scoring screen. See number 72? He's up in there deep, and he just turns it all up there and causes havoc for the whole group. Correction. Loss of five yards. It's second down and 15. Jaworski in the flat. He's got the running room. This is Haddock. Haddock to the 41. Vernon Dean making a, a tough tackle on a number one draft choice with great speed, but hasn't found a position yet in pro football. You think maybe they've resigned themselves that they're not going to make a living running today and they're going to get after him throwing a little bit more? Well, Marion Campbell told us he'd like to get inside the tackles and blast them out of there, but you just don't line up against people like Dave Butts and Manley and Mann and, and uh, Hamill and, and, and do that kind of a thing. And so far, they haven't been able to do it at all. Third down and nine. Shotgun. The blitz is on. Intended for Garrity. Barry Wilburn. Good coverage on the Penn Stater. You'll see on the very last part of this play that Barry Wilburn, number 45, is doing a nice job of playing pass defense on Greg Garrity. They both go up for the football. Neither come down with it. Good pass defense by Barry Wilburn. As the everybody, player. everybody knows, the officials have let them play with the old rule that you can play under those passes. It's really helped pro football this year. Yeah. Long as Excuse me, go ahead. Dick. As long as you look back for the ball. As long as you're playing the ball. That's yeah. the way the rule is. Moran kicking now. Daryl Green waiting. Out of bounds at the five-yard line, the three-yard line. What a kick by number two. And our score is five to three. Five to three. Don't forget, the Redskins have had six penalties in the game. The Eagles, none. And one of those penalties was a called back punt of 90 yards by Green. Punt return, you're talking about. Punt return. That's, that's something. The numbers on Schrader. The crowd getting into it on first and ten. Schrader. Oh, good catch by Gary Clark. What a dangerous pass play. Herm Edwards was draped all over number 84. Herman came driving up there, throwing that short stuff in front of the Eagle Corners with the technique that they use. They can get up there. Now, you're going to watch the quarterback here as he freezes the linebackers with a play-action fake. Now, see both linebackers step up. Now he plants, pivots, and throws the ball to his left, and you can see that that receiver had to come back after that one. The fans at that end of the stadium are trying to make it difficult for the Redskins. Second down six. Later again throw it. Oh, good pass to Gittier. Gittier to the 27. Good throw by Schrader. Gittier slow getting up. Hit by Ray Ellis. A snappy pass play. Clint Gittier, number 86. They run a play action fake to freeze the linebacker and hit him right up inside the strong safety in the zone. Now watch as he releases. Makes a fake. Now watch him hit right in between the zone. There he is between the safety and the linebacker. Ray Ellis, number 24, 55, Mike Reichenbach. Fourth catch for Didier as he's helped off the field. He's all right, just a little bit woozy. A 17-yarder, and the Redskins have breathing room. High formation. They stay in it. Here's the inside hand on Rogers. Dunk. Good play by Greg Brown. A man they call the Buffalo. Elsewhere, Dallas has the field goal. It's 29 to 3 in the third. That's got to be Weish's greatest win. 31 to 10. Atlanta trailing Kansas City. Makovic's had a tough year. Miami now controlling Green Bay in the third. 20 to 10. And of course, if Philadelphia doesn't win today, a lot of things can happen. One of them is they're completely eliminated if they're not already for the playoffs. Second down, nine. A sprint left by Schrader. Oh, almost 
almost intercepted. A dangerous pass by the young quarterback. Should have never thrown that football. Good coverage by the defense. He's out there. They had him covered all the way, and he tried to force the throw, and Herman Darnier picked it off. That's an inexperienced quarterback throwing that one. Now you're going to see him sprint out to the left. Motion man going to the left. Now watch him drop and sprint to his left. Now he's getting out there in front. Good protection. No reason to hurry. He's out there. Now you'll pick up the receivers downfield. He's looking. See the defender right there had him covered all the way. Reading the quarterback and the receiver. Wouldn't you rather have the quarterback looking back and getting somebody coming from the other side down the middle? Definitely should, Tom. Third down and nine. On the 26. Schrader. Oh, good completion to Mount First down, Washington. A little scuffle breaks out. As number 83 for the receiving team has some problems. That's McGrath. Now you're watching here the Eagle secondary. They're all sitting back there. You can see this guy with his hand up. He's calling the secondary coverages as this man here. Hold it. Hold it right there. This man here goes in motion. He's recalling the coverages. See that? Now he's got the coverages. He changed the coverage right prior to the ball being snapped. Now he takes everybody away. Herman Edwards does a good job, but a well-executed route. The fourth catch for 50 yards for Monk and a big first down, 11 yards. Rodgers being thrown for a loss of two. Reggie Wilkes was first, number 51. Reggie Wilkes played that like a linebacker ought to play that, number 51, pre-med student out of Georgia Tech, super guy, my first high draft pick. Here he is over here. Now watch him fend off the blocker and work inside out on the play. Don Warren blocking on him. See him. He's working. has leverage to the outside like he did. Now he works inside out. He turns it back. Attacks the play. And here comes Kenny Clark, that fine all-pro nose guard as we select. And <laughs> never let Rogers turn it up and get into that cut position, huh? Yeah, nice job by Reggie. Second down and 14 on the 33. Schrader being sacked by Ellis. Dog from the secondary safety man Ray Ellis safety blitz strong safety blitz very good call by Fred Bruni coming from the left of your screen you'll see him shut it off as he comes out right now you can't see him he'll appear right after the snap now here he comes number 24 Ray Ellis out of Ohio State puts him down there he goes puts him down and nobody knows better than you Fred Bruni and Mary Campbell are not a big blitzing ball club no they, they don't that time. No. Many times they back that up with a zone defense and not a true blitz defense. The second sack for the Eagles today. Third down and 19. Schrader. Sacked again. Byron Darby came up with the ball, but the referee says the Redskins can punt it. The offensive line will be blamed for this, but as you watch the defense here, everybody is covered. There is no one for the young man to throw the ball to. It makes the offensive line look bad. Now, as they move downfield, hold it right there. You can see he's cut, he's locked up, he's locked up, and he's locked up. No one to throw the ball to. Here it is. He still wants to throw. No one clean. The young quarterback was scraped and clean to the ball, but they said he was in the grasp, so it would be the third sack for the Eagles, but they almost had the ball. Fourth and 32, as Cooper has helped off, the young secondary man. Herman Hunter will be back to take the punt, and I'm telling you, Steve Cox has got some pressure on him right now for Washington. You know, if Cooper can't come back in, that could affect their nickel defense. That's what broke down last week in the ball game when they gave up all those points. The fifth punt for Cox, and it's Ooh. a good one. Great punt, great, great punt. Hunter back at the 34-yard line. The flags are down. There's going to be a penalty against the Eagles for an illegal block under that punt. And here comes Bob Frederick, the zebra, to tell us about it. You think he likes you calling him a zebra there, Mr. Brookshire? Huh? Well, I love him. You know, I just, I used to call him other things when I played. I called him a lot worse than that, too. <laughs> It's amazing how you can get all pent up in the emotion of a football game and a guy calls something and you get after him. The illegal block on the kick return team, number 20. And just as a disclaimer, 
All the rules that have been put in since the late 70s on have been to keep people from being injured. So just so somebody doesn't think it's just to improve points or production yeah. or something, it's truly really to protect the players. So especially that in the grasp. And yeah. I really don't care for that one. Now you can see in the bottom left of your screen, number 20, Andre Waters hits him from the back right there doesn't <laughs> knock him down but does oh he actually yeah. ends up getting him down number yeah. 20. that could have that that can do it from behind your knees are pretty yeah. vulnerable they used to call it a clip that's right they didn't have so many officials then they <laughs> couldn't find out what everybody was doing 528 left in the third period it's a 5-3 game and while the score has been slight the game has been really exciting and marion campbell by now has 30 sticks of gum in there do you think did you say third quarter or third inning? Third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> New, England, three. New England laying it on Detroit. The Lions hate to go away from home. It's 5-3 in the third. Guys, hang tough, will you? Hey, that's a pretty coat. Did you spring for that? Did you buy that? CBS huh? bought that. <laughs> hey, don't. Would you put it in in your expense account? Or road trip? Yeah. Of course I did. First and ten here. It's a 5-3 game. 5-28 left in the third. First and ten. Jaworski back to throw. Complete to Spagnola. Spagnola dragging people just short of midfield. Twenty-yard reception. You're going to see John Spagnola, the tight end right here, come off and cross as the running backs create opposite flow for the linebackers in secondary. See, now watch him sneak off to the inside, the right of your screen. Now he's going to cross. Neil Opowitz, 52, stepped up. Ron Jaworski lays it right where he has to it, and Spag puts it away. He tried to knock it out. The Redskins always try to knock that ball out. Short of midfield, it's first and ten. A safety and a field goal against a field goal. Jaworski finds Spagnola. Oh, Spagnola still on his feet at the 45 of Washington. Rich Mallott hung on. Spagnola was telling us how Malott has improved so much that he's one of the top outside linebackers now to play against. He has a lot of respect for him. This Spagnola is an outstanding guy, young guy from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Catholic High School. A lot of good football players have come out of that area. Going to get married in April. He did a great job for me, and I really appreciated his effort over the years. Second down and five. Goes outside there under Jackson. First down and more. Jackson knocked out of bounds at the 27 by Okowitz. A good, quick slip screen to the left side for 17 yards. Follow Kenny Reeves, the offensive tackle, as he slips outside after the draw fake, freezing the linebackers. Now watch the quarterback draw. Now find Reeves to the right of your screen. He lays it out there. Follow 66, the young rookie right here. Gets a knockdown right there. And there he is, Ernie Jackson running clean. Got a good crackback block by the flanker, too, or the outside receiver, the wideout. Most of those guys have it in their contract that they don't have to hit anybody, you know? <laughs> I think that was Mike Quick, but it was a good block. Mike Quick will hit you. First and 10 for the Eagles. Pretty good looking drive. The blitz is on. Jaworski tries to get it to Jackson. Vernon Dean was there at the 20. Ron Jaworski, with his experience, read the safety blitz, as did Kenny Jackson, and they broke it off. You're going to see the safety blitz coming here. I can't see him right there by the goalpost. Here he is. He's coming, and he picks it up right now and just throws the slant in. That is a sight adjustment, not called in the huddle. That is the most common way to handle the safety blitz today. By common, you don't mean common, common, you mean just common, right? Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, absolutely stopped in the first half, only had two completions. Second down and ten, Zawarski, outside for quick. It's good. Darrell Green was there. Good throw by Zawarski. And he was closely covered. You can see that Daryl Green was playing good pass defense there, but the ball was thrown right where it had to be thrown, low into the outside, away from the pass defender. Mike Quick, a true all-pro. 
Jaworski now has eight of 21 for 93 yards. So he's got six completions in this third quarter. Ball's on the 16. Mike Quick at the 10. Curtis Jordan tackling Quick. Jaworski seems to have the team moving a little bit. They've picked up momentum. Mike Quick is lined up in the slot formation right here and goes back underneath. The follow him is he leaves the line of scrimmage. He goes out. Now watch, he won't go very deep. He goes back underneath the linebackers right there, running cross in front. And you know, many times those guys get a headache when they get up underneath there, Tom. But this guy is very elusive. And now he's being tackled there by Curtis Jordan, number 22. And the offensive line must be doing a pretty good job of cutting those people down. Second down, four. On the 10. Broken play. Broken play that was finally quarterback sneak. Dave Butts putting 295 pounds on Jaworski. It looked like somebody broke a little bit of a count earlier. Maybe it was a bad snap. I'll tell you what happened. The offensive center snapped the ball on the wrong count, an early count by mistake, and he doesn't make those kind of mistakes very often. Philadelphia. Called for a team timeout. First one in the half. They have two remaining in this half. Bob Frederick tells us that Jaworski wants to talk to the sidelines. They're right on the brink. It's a 5-3 game here in Philadelphia. 5-3 game. The Eagles on a real march, and these numbers tell you the story. Seven of nine in the second half. No interceptions. 84 yards against Richie Pettibone's defense, rated number one against the pass in the NFL. You can keep Ron down, but you normally can't keep him down, Tom, through four quarters. He'll end up with having a good series or two. Sometimes you win with it. Third down and two on the eighth. The Redskins are off. Oh, almost intercepted by Curtis Jordan, but the Eagles will get the first down on a penalty. Jaworski changed up the count and drew him offside. Oh God! They just called. They just called a, pa a penalty on Vernon Dean for throwing his helmet ten yards away from the play. I don't understand that. Is that unsportsmanlike conduct or what? That probably is what that is. He's so mad at the situation, but the real penalty where the defensive lineman that lurched into the gaps when Ron somehow changed his, his count, his cadence. I tell you, Ron is very good with the erratic cadence. He gets down there and he'll bark right in your ear. He sees the guy a little edgy and he'll notice that and then he'll lean right over to him and yell at him. It's like someone walking up behind you and going, boo, you jump. And that's what happens many times. And you know what happens when you take your helmet off and make the official look bad before everybody, you get it. You can't do that. Got to keep your poise, Vernon. You played long enough. We had three different defensive fouls. Offside on the defense to be refused. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense, which will be refused. We had a defensive pass interference, number 32, in the end zone. And it will be a first down and goal. You're going to see the route here, and you, you can judge yourself whether there was pass interference. <laughs> I don't know how you can call that. The ball never even got there. Or you can bounce people at five yards. That was at about six or seven. No, but the ball was almost intercepted by a linebacker. First and goal. through a big hole. The penalties have killed the Redskins today and certainly buoyed up this Eagle team. McFadden trying the extra point. Jaworski holding. Looks pretty good. Jackson talking to Herm Edwards. Right now they're smiling. 
lot of time left in this one. It's 12 to 3. Because the ball carrier cut it all the way back. Behind Leonard Mitchell, number 74. Now watch you see the opening to your right of the screen? He cut it all the way back behind the pursuit of the defense for the touchdown. Eric Jackson scoring his third touchdown of the year. Eight plays, 71 yards. It still makes a 12-3 game, which means a touchdown and a field goal. And the Redskins would still win it. Two points doesn't give you an advantage. Keith Griffin at the 10. Griffin upended at the 25 and a half yard line. Don't forget this Saturday on CBS. It starts with the NFL today. And then the Chicago Bars of Mike Ditka, 12 and 1 against the New York Jets under Joe Walton, 9 and 4, 12 o'clock Eastern Time. Saturday football on CBS Sports. As hard as these two teams are hitting each other, Tom, you'd think they were playing for the playoff berth today and the, and the win put them in. They're really getting after it. The thing is, they can't afford to lose any games, especially the Redskins. Whether or not the Eagles are even in it or not remains to be seen this afternoon later. Schrader completes them up. Art Mark. Ellis throws him out of bounds at the Eagle 36. I don't see any flags now. Art Monk made a great reception, and then it was heading off at the pass time. A 39-yard reception. Watch Art Monk after he catches the football. The ball's in the middle of your screen, high middle there. Great oh. catch. He gets up. Now he tucks that thing away, gets a block downfield from his opposite wide receiver. Now he's going to come from running back. Look at him. Got the old stiff arm out there, just like the old guys used to use. He cuts back up inside, he gets put down. First down, big play player. He explained how you can catch 106 in this league a couple of years ago, that's the way you do it. You're just a great athlete. Inside goes Rogers. Rogers, a big rushing half in the first half. Art Monk out of Syracuse. He was a running back part of the time before he was drafted by the Redskins, you know, this guy has 15 catches over 40 yards and 12 games with eight catches or more. And look at him here. Over the last three years, 220 receptions. I bet he gets paid well. <laughs> he should get paid well. <laughs> no, Mr. Cook is back in Washington watching, and he knows we're just kidding because they are all well paid. Second down and nine. Schrader. Complete to you-know-who. To the 28. You know they're looking for him. Herb Edwards finally found him, but Monk is something special. Elsewhere. 43. Dallas, three. Oh. Dallas has a touchdown. 20 to 6, New England in the fourth quarter. 38 to 10, Kansas City in the third quarter. The Jets, 21 to 7 over Buffalo in the third. And here we are, 12 to 3. Marion Campbell's team has not backed off. Third down and two. Rogers. First down. Got it. There are no flags down. A 28-yard touchdown burst by George Rogers. The Redskins are not only back in the game, they might be back in the driver's seat. Rodgers is 111 yards on 24 carries. And don't go away. Mosley for the extra point. Schrader is the holder. It is good. And the Redskins trail by two points. There's a flag down. There's John Riggins on the sideline, still in his jacket. Rogers has gone all the way, spelled by Griffin once in a while. There's Riggo. That comment he made to Coach Gibbs about, hey, I will be there. I will not be hard to find. Just give me a call when it's my turn. That's a great attitude by a real solid veteran football player. Great player. 
Ringo. Well, personal foul on the defensive team number 24. The point will be good. The penalty will be carried over to the kickoff. That means that Ray Ellis got even with somebody on the extra point. It'll cost him on the kickoff. You're going to watch this big back here. Roll it nice and square away and then pick it and go. Now remember, it was short yardage. George Rogers carrying short yards in the secondary was up now see him cut back and hit that lane right in there nice job good power running reggie wilkes couldn't put him down the secondary the safeties were all up close and once you break it in short yardage no one there to make the play tom you remember that in your old days right that's right this is the third 100 yard rushing day as a redskin for george rogers and as we saw rico was enjoying it almost as much as george himself let me repeat that stat the redskins have won 23 in a row when a running back runs for 100 yards or more and we're in the third period with a minute and 12 left. It seems to me like the Redskins answered the call after giving up a touchdown with penalties and what have you. They've come back to establish themselves. Steve Cox, the long kickoff man, and the punter will kick off. And Herman Hunter is waiting. After the, from the midfield kickoff, Herman Hunter will touch it down. And the Eagles will have a chance for their offense from the 20-yard line. 10 to 12. Earlier in the year, Dick, you did the preseason games, uh, which are just practice games, as you know. And you, you said something about the Eagles winning six games. And I think it was interpreted incorrectly by some people. What did you mean? Well, I predicted they'd win six games based on what I saw in the preseason. Now, I'll tell you something. If I thought they'd win 12, I'd have still predict six. I wouldn't put that kind of pressure on Marion Campbell. The Eagles are six and seven coming in. Jaworski, play action pass. Overthrowing Kenny Jackson. Ron, the ball slipped out of Jaworski's hands, and Kenny Jackson was open at about the 35 and had no chance to go up the ladder for that one. Kenny Jackson was trying to drive downfield on the corner, but by gosh, he couldn't get his traction, and he was slipping and falling, and he couldn't get around for that cur uh, curl pattern. Hey, there you, you are, Brooks. You used to be down there behind the bench. Yeah, you're not too bad-looking guy on that screen. <laughs> you know? like that. I clean up well. <laughs> Incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. A minute left in the third quarter. Jaworski completes the Spagnola. Curtis Jordan tackling Spagnola short of the first down. You know, we've said a lot of great things about Wes Hopkins, the free safety, being the maybe the best safety in all of football. But this guy, Curtis Jordan, leads the Redskins defense in tackling coming into this ball game with 155 tackles. He knows where the ball carrier or the receiver is, and he gets after him. You can see the third second becoming history here at that stadium. And I got a feeling that the fourth quarter is going to be one we're all going to remember. Third down and five. Shotgun. Sack at the 15 by Charles Mann. A big sack because the field position to start the fourth quarter for the Redskins will be good. It'll be an excellent place to You're start. You're going to see Mr. Mann. He's the way outside here working on Leonard Mitchell. He'll come around. He'll come around. Now, see him keep coming around. Leonard's working on him. There he comes around. I tell you, the, the coverage did a nice job down of making him hold the ball downfield. Moran now standing on his own goal line. Nice punt, Darryl Tom. Green is waiting for the punt. Oh, it's a good punt. Green is the 33. but Green got it into Eagle territory. A 17-yard return. Oh, yeah. Brookshire and Vermeil, you look at a young Green who has been sensational running back the punts. He, he is something special. You know, you watch him here, people don't know this, but in college he had a 20.6-yard per punt return average, and he shows why he was so good in college by returning this one right here, Tom. Back 
to live action inside Eagle territory at the 49th, first and 10. Charles Rogers breaks open and gets a first down inside the Eagle 40. Wes Hopkins barely able to tackle the big one. That's that famous counter trade play where the running back sets to his, in this case, to his left and then comes back to the right, allowing the people. Now watch the running back set here, and this freezes both the linebackers, allowing these two people to get over in front and block. Now watch him set there. See him? Now that allowed the two people to get over there. Nice block by that big wow. Jacoby. He buried Anthony Griggs. They're going to be measuring for a first, but it looked like it was a first from up here. Remember, Rogers is carrying 229 pounds, and he loves to run to the right. It's first down. Rogers well, with 121 yards rushing. In running to his right on that play, he's getting the best of both worlds because he's bringing that big 66 over to the right to run along with him, Tom. It's like a <laughs> Caterpillar tractor. <laughs> oh, God, I tell you. We've got the fourth quarter to bring to you. I'm getting excited. How yeah. about you? Well, huh? That crazy safety always brings up strange... I'm, I'm sure I'm medical possibility. This is when I'm really glad I'm not down there in Marion's shoes. First and ten. High formation. They stay in it. Hand off. Rogers hit hard to get to the 35. Reggie White hit him before he got to the line of scrimmage, and he still made a yard or so. You know, Joe Gibbs right there. I bet the reason they don't play Daryl Green or use him as the punt returner all the time is that he's so valuable as a corner because he's been in the Pro Bowl that they can't afford to take, you know, the chance and get him hurt. Yeah. But it's great to have him there as a backup. And Kenny Jacobs separated his shoulder, so obviously the, yeah. the reason that Green is pressed in the service is a good one. Rodgers at 140, 130, 24 yards. Now he's close to the 30. It'll be short of a first down. They're running the right side a lot now. Eagle defense has got to buck up and get a turnover. That's how they kept this ball game close for the first half. You know, the Redskins rushing, they're getting up close to that other great stat that they have. If they run for 40 times or more, Tom, they've won 28 of 29 games. That's a heck of a stat. And it's over a period of time. This is not just this season. Yeah, they've already run now 31, 147 yards. The Eagles have had trouble defense in the run all year. They don't rate very high in the National Football League stats, defense in the run. Here's some scores, huh? St. Mc Louis got him going. Hey, I'm happy for old Jim Hanneman. Hanneman. Yeah. Sure. Dan McQuaid is in as Mark May comes out. Something temporarily is disturbing right now in the leg area. The third down and one. Big down, big down. Ball is on the 30. Wands leaves in there. Short yardage. First down and more for the 27 goes George Rogers. Great block by Otis Wansley, the fullback. He can really hit you. And Rogers was protecting the ball like it was a diamond. Take a look at the fullback right here. I think you can see him as he comes and gets the block. And I hope I've got that going in the right direction. <laughs> I get it turned around every once. Yeah, I've got it going to hurt. Boom, nice block there. And he turns back up inside. First down. It's a first and 10 on the 27, 12.43 on the clock. Eagles lead by two points. Duncan Clark to the top of your screen. Schrader upended by Ellis. Schrader upended just inside the 30-yard line. And where did the safety man come from? He came off the short side of the formation. He came from over here and, and nailed it, number 24, Ray Ellis. There's a slot to the left of the screen. Now see him up here? Came right down there and hit that thing right at the exchange point. Nice play by Ray Ellis. He will hit you, I'll tell you that. He, that's how he made the football team originally as a 12th round draft choice, just because he would hit people so hard on the special teams. Well, you, you can't go to Ohio State and not hit people, so he learned it early. It's against Woody's religion there. Big defensive play, second down, 12. Schrader. Art Muck has it. Art Muck catches it in front of Lionel Young at the 18. Pretty good looking throw by Young Schrader, too. And a super route run by Art Monk. And I'll tell you, he's running it on a fine corner, and Roy Nell Young, he went out, he hooked inside, and slid back to the sideline on the out. Play action pass used here. 
quarterback is second down, going to fake the run. They're running the ball out. It's going to freeze the linebackers. See the linebackers sitting there, 52, 55. They're locked up in tight. Now he has nice protection. Throws the ball to the outside. Nice catch right there. Royneal Young right on him to make the play. 107 yards per month. That's the fifth time in six weeks he's been over 100. First and 10. The Redskins are driving. Rogers to the 10 yard line and carrying people with him. You know, also right now, Anthony Griggs, number 58, is not in the ball game, so they're playing with a, a second linebacker, number 52, Rich Kleinek, who can play. He's a tough guy, but it's not like having your starter in there, and the Redskins might be taking advantage of it, Tom, and pounding up in there. Remember what we told you earlier. If the Redskins win their remaining games, of course, including today, they would be 10 and 6. And then a lot of things would have to happen, but they might get in the playoffs. Second down, four. Rogers to the six. Hopkins and Reggie Wilkes combining for the tackle as Rigo looks on. Hey, Rigo's into it. He's into it. He is a really a true Redskin, this guy. You know, there are a lot of superstars in this league. If they weren't starting when they thought they ought to start, they'd have a fit. And you've right. been around those kind of guys. An unselfish football player. He's had 18 100-yard rushing days after his 30th birthday. I'm telling you, he should be put in the Princeton Museum. <laughs> I'd like to have some of what he has. <laughs> Rogers at 144 yards. First and goal from the six. Oh, Rogers. Bent backward at the six. You know what Marion Campbell did with the defense that time? As they put the man in motion, he stunned the line toward the man in motion. Good call, Coach Campbell. Now you'll watch a man go in motion here, and you'll watch the defense now all slide toward the man in motion. Had a little scouting tip, I'm sure, in the reports. Now watch him sliding over there. See him? See the nose guard getting over in there? Kenny Clark, 71. Gets good penetration. Gets up in there. Nice job. Craneck comes in and finishes him off. Second and goal from the five. Short yardage offense. The pass for Schrader. Touchdown. Gary Clark catches a touchdown. And Schrader took a little off that throw. It was a good one, a five-yarder. A quick slant. Number 84 out of James Madison College and the USFL. Mosley's kick. Flags are down again. A lot of people are getting even on the extra points. <laughs> Little Clark, that's his fourth touchdown pass this year. Does a nice job. Had 58 balls coming in so he can catch it. defensive team and the point was good the foul will be carried over the penalty for the foul will be carried over the next kickoff all right we'll be back it's 17 to 12 the eagles must get a touchdown to get back in front of eight seconds went off the clock and then the that? eagles now need to try to get yeah. back and get on top and as we mentioned with the funny score 17 12 forget field goals they've got to go for a touchdown Steve Cox kicking off for Washington. It's a line drive. That's going to go through the end zone and out. And the Eagles will have the ball in the 20. There's big Joe Jacoby. You can see why his wife Irene loves him, huh? And that guy, huh? I'll, I'll tell you what, they say he's an avid golfer. How'd you like to stay on the first tee and argue with him about strokes? <laughs> 305 pounds. He's and a he, heck of a player. You know, he was a free agent. Nobody drafted him. From Louisville. I you know I'd fire the scout. <laughs> that turned him down. I'll tell you that. First and ten from the 20, the Eagles have got to go 80 yards. Drop back pass, Jaworski to Haddock. Haddock gets to the 26. Okowitz and Kaufman making the tackle. 
50 to 10. That looks like a tax proposal. <laughs> hey, but that you put that with the Chicago Barracks score. They've had some points scored on them. Look at this. Green Bay has jumped back and gotten on top of Miami. Green Bay is a good football team. We've seen them a couple times. They're afraid of Forrest Gregg as a reason. <laughs> and now Chicago handling Indianapolis. Of course, the Bears have locked up the Central. Here we've got nothing locked up. Second down four. Eight minutes left. Gorski. In and out of. Jackson dropped it. Olkowitz right there. Right here, they've got to think about first down. Of course, that's an obvious third down here, but I'm a little surprised maybe they didn't use two downs in that situation, Tom, to get the first down. They only had three and a half to four yards to go. Of course, that, that pass should have been caught. No excuse for a pro running back to catch that one, especially at pressure time. He's got to make that catch. And the Eagles do have their timeouts left. They still have three. throwing the ball away and they'll have to kick the football as the Redskins covered everybody he had to throw that away Tommy had no choice he wanted to go downfield he almost let it go he started a pump and throw the coverage took it away and then he saw the layoff man was covered so he threw it in the bleachers now Michael Haran is a left-footed kicker and any safety man will tell you the ball does come down in funny spirals and that's Daryl Green waiting for it. The other thing, the ball spins differently coming off the left-footed punter, so Daryl Green has to really be alert for that. That's what I just said. <laughs> Here's the ball. It's on the way. Green's going to get it. Oh, Jeez. good coverage. Good coverage. Number 39 down quickly on that. Major Everett. And a great punt by Haran. Hey, we've got a ball game. It's 17 to 12. Raiders hand off to Rogers. No game. Anthony Griggs under the pile. You can see that Washington, I know I would if uh, I were Joe Gibbs, I'd try to pound that football at him. Of course, when you get shut down on second, on first down like that, it almost forces you into a passing situation. But Joe still might run the draw or run the ball anyway. And because they like to hold on to it. And on defense, you're thinking fumble, fumble, get after fumble. It, yeah. right? Get up field and drop the run. Second down and nine, a gain of one. Schrader on the misdirection, hand off to Rogers. Oh, Timmy Clark makes a great play at the line of scrimmage and helped out by Griggs. Kenny Clark is a real fine football player. Now you watch him butt here and work inside out on that running play. It's not easy to play this position. He's going to get blocked down on right there. Now he whips it. Now you'll see him reappear on your screen. Number 71, there he is fighting for his life and getting in on the play. Nice job of nose guard play. And Bostic had pretty good original position on the block, but Kenny Clark is hurt. They put in Joe Drake. Now he's a minor refrigerator. He's about 310. <laughs> the 14th game of the season. Everybody's playing with injuries. Third down and nine. Underthrown. And the Redskins have to punt. Gary Clark was the receiver, but Schrader made sure he didn't throw it to somebody in white and green. He threw it where he had to because Roy Nell Young, the left corner, number 43, had the receiver covered nicely. Now, Cox has been a tremendous kicker since he arrived on the scene in Washington, but he has had trouble getting a block before, and he does drop it strangely. Cooper is back to accept the ball inside his 30. Looks like they might come after it, Tom. They're loading up rush wise. They're coming after it. It's a pretty good kick under threat of pressure. Cooper. Cooper scoops up at the 34. You can hear those shots oh. upstairs. Did that hurt or did that hurt? A 10 yard return, and the Eagles now will get their offense going with 6 12 left. Don't forget, next Sunday, the NFL Today on weekend number 15, the Giants in Dallas. Philadelphia goes to San Diego. Minnesota against Atlanta. So check your local listings and join us. Boy, what a season. And really, it's just beginning to go. The Eagles, if they lose today, it is all over. But you know something, Tom? This game proves how close the Eagles are to once again 
becoming a playoff football team. And since they are the second youngest team in the National Football League, I think if they got in there again, they'd be there for a long time. They've got a new owner, and you don't think they need a new coach, then, is what you're saying. Oh, I don't. So I think the new owner's done a good job, too. First and 10. The ball's on the 34. Herman Hunter's in the backfield. Michael Quick. Michael Quick took the play action pass. A perfect throw by Jaworski. A 29 yard strike, and Marion Campbell puts in another stick of gum. Mike Quick was in the slot, and he ran an out and up from inside the slot, and you need a lot of time to run that kind of pattern, Tom, and the offensive line gave him time, and boy, has this offensive line improved. And remember, the field goal will not help. First and 10. Jaworski trying to set up the screen. Hunter. Hunter inside the 30 to the 28. Vernon Dean hustles him out there. Flags are down. The they flags made, are down. I don't know what they called, but I think somebody tackled Dexter Manley over there, number 72. He broke to the inside, and all of a sudden, someone reached out, I think, and grabbed him by the foot and pulled him to the ground. It's offsides. Washington is the oh, call. Oh, God. They got man offside, number 71. And the Eagles are going with a pro set backfield with Hunter in there, along with Michael Haddix. Hunter is a little better receiver than Jackson. Dexter Manley, he's screaming over there. He's still mad. Number 71 on the defense's offside. Penalty will be refused. You can see right here the, the defensive lineman is going to be offside. He moves prior to the snap team. He gets in the neutral zone, and he doesn't get back. Five yards. First and ten. Remember, field goals don't help. The Eagles must have a touchdown. Ball's on the 27-yard line. Jaworski dumps it in the flat to Haddock. Haddock trying to get to the 20-yard line. People are exchanging greetings all along the line of scrimmage. The action is getting rough. The Bears beat Indianapolis 17 to 10, a final score. Not easy, though. Colts played them tough. That's an improving team. St. Louis, 28 to 16. And here, Marion Campbell in his third year. Talking to Frank Gantz, the special teams coach, probably discussing the field goal situation, which they wouldn't want to kick now anyway. So they have three downs for the first down, Tom. Inside move. First down, Herman Hunter. A 192-pounder from Tennessee State. That's a good run. Running tough. He had a good training camp, and here he is, 11th round draft choice, playing football and playing well. You can see it's just a handoff here. He's got a kick out block. He's turning up inside. He's protecting the football. Nice play there by Manny. He runs out of that tackle, and people have to come over and finish him off. But now you're in the plus territory. First and 10 on the 16. The yards are tough. Blitz left his arm. Jaworski. Overthrow quick. Safety blitz, Tom. He had to unload it. This is the side adjustment that didn't work this time. You're going to see he had a call route. He sees the safety blitz, and he breaks it back to the inside. Now he's coming off. It looks like he came out of the huddle with this call. It did not. It was not a huddle call. There it is, but Ron just had to unload it a little too quick. Second down and 10 from the 16. Blitz is on. Michael Quick catches it. Has what I think is a first down and stops the clock. What a 
catch, and what a throw. Michael Quick will appear from the left side of your screen in a crossing pattern coming underneath the rush. You can see the stunt picked up inside nicely by Ron Baker. There's the ball. There's the receiver. Now he's running like a ball carrier. Now you can see how elusive he is as a runner. There's Marion Campbell. Checking with Ted Marshall, Broder, the offensive coordinator, probably deciding whether they're going to take and try to run the ball down here or throw it. Haddix is in, number 26. Quick is to the top of the screen. First and goal. Oh, it is almost intercepted. And almost caught. And it's an incomplete pass. Kaufman came close to stopping this game. Ron goes back, Jaworski, number seven, right in the middle of your screen. He's going to look to his left initially. See him looking right. Now watch him look to his left. See, now he turns to the right. He doesn't see Mel Coffin, number 55, right there, who should have made the interception. Mel doesn't drop many of them. He had three pass interceptions coming into the ballgame. Jaworski now very seriously approaching this. Second down and goal from the five. He's being rushed. To the two. Darrell Green barely able to stop the big fullback. The clock continuing to run. Ted Marsh, you to the right of your screen, making the offensive calls from down on the field. A lot of coordinators call him from the press box, but he feels that he can feel the tempo of the game better down on the field. Now remember, they're two yards away. Here's Joe. He's relying right now on his defensive coordinators to come up with some good calls. But these are tough two yards. Tough two yards against the Redskins. Are you figuring you've got two plays to do it? Yeah. Okay. I think they'll try to run two myself or throw on this down. Third and goal from the two. Rich Malott. Malott made the tackle underneath. Rich Malott makes the play, number 57. Here he is, watch him shoot. Here he goes, fine football player from Penn State. Look at him go right up and attack. He avoid the run. fullback should have made the block, and you can see how mad he was for missing that block. Nice job by Rich Malott. Haddock's had a chance to take the linebacker filling the hole and missed him. Three from the three. I believe Ted Marsh, the goal the offensive coordinator, will throw the ball in this situation. A rollout. They like to, but with this formation, maybe not, Tom. The ball game on the line. Incomplete. Rich Malott. The linebacker from Penn State spiked the ball. And now Gibbs is talking to Schrader just how to hold the ball. Here's Malat right here. That's the guy that made the play. It appears that I've been circling that guy a lot today. Ron looks to his right. Look at all it. Malat just jumps, plays volleyball with it, and bats it back. He was trying to get the ball over there to his right. I think it was quick set to the right that time. Trying to get it over there. I don't blame him for trying to get over there. Look at Joe. Look yeah. at Joe. Yeah, yeah. He's in. And, and inside on the other side, five, how tough it is. Oh, Marshall it is tough. on the right. Marion Campbell on the left. You, I'll tell you, Tom, you can't believe what's going through your mind and your heart in that situation as a coach. A lot of time on the clock. 2.49. Rogers off the left side. Keep in mind now, if you're playing defense, you're telling yourself, we can make Rodgers fumble, perhaps, and still stay close enough to get a touchdown. The big thing you can't do is gamble, though, in this situation. And figure you've already lost, so we just gamble. There's two minutes and 42 seconds to go, Tom. If they play sound defense and make them punt, they still have the ball in good field position. The Eagles now with one timeout left, and the Redskins, I think, just burned one. 
Marion Campbell discussing defenses right here with Mike Rockenbaum. Knowing Marion like I'm doing, he's talking. I don't think he's going to blitz him a dog. He's going to play firm defense and try to get the ball back rather than gamble and take the chance of getting the sack, but even more so taking the chance of getting a big play against him. And Marion Campbell even used that timeout to make sure his young linebacker that's sort of helping stabilize the defense knows. On the other side, the tension hasn't left this sidelines either. As Coach Gibbs has the lead, apparently the game, and he knows he's got to win all the rest of them and go 10-6. I'll tell you something, you mentioned the game. I guarantee you that Joe Gibbs does not feel he has the game yet. And so many times, you know, through my 23 years of experience, I've sat with five minutes to go and had the lead, and I said, God, we're going to win this one, and all of a sudden, we don't win it. Where do you run to? Your strongest offensive blocking side of the line, or? Me, I would. I'd go up behind the Jacoby and those kind of guys. You know, they got me where we are. I'm just going to keep doing it. You see the scores as they come up. Right now, we're sort of worried just about the next two minutes and 42 seconds. And that's what Coach Gibbs is worried about. The Eagles have no timeouts remaining. Rodgers is just tied the regular season club record for the number of carries with 34 rushes. Second down and nine. The ball is on the four. Not much. Rogers gets to the five. Now Schrader has a little bit of a decision. I don't, it won't be his decision. That's one advantage of the coaches calling the plays. You don't have to make this decision. I don't believe they'll throw the ball. You've got a five-point lead. The ball is on the five-yard line. That's a very tough call. I don't care if you have the lead or not. This is not an easy play. <laughs> if I were Joe, I'd run the football, but he's a lot smarter than I am because he's won that Super Bowl before, and he thinks uh, you're a lot smarter because you're in the television business. <laughs> no. He's a wonderful guy, though. And this man knows how to handle the tension. He's been to that Super Bowl a couple of times. Nobody has left the stadium. Over 60,000 still here in Philadelphia. They watch the Eagles take the ball and go inside the five and fail on fourth down. And now it's third and eight on the five for the Redskins. Rogers outside. He's short. He's to the seven-yard line and driven back. And here comes... Steve Cox did, and Marion Campbell has put the pressure on again. I'll tell you, that was very good coaching on both sides of the line of scrimmage that time. Joe had no choice, really, especially with the young quarterback in there, to run the football. And Marion kept that defense just playing very sound, not stunting, dogging that stuff, just play good defense. They'll come after and try to block it now. Because there's no timeouts left for Philadelphia, and you're inside the two minutes, so that's not going to help, and the clock is running. The Eagles do not have any playoff possibilities should they lose this game. Cooper is back on midfield at the 50. Cox has not had one block this year, to my knowledge. There have been 15 punts today. This is number 15 by both teams. He's going to wait as long as possible, and probably, will he take a penalty? No, I don't think he'll take a penalty. He wouldn't want to back it up any nice closer. Off timeout. No. You wouldn't want to back it up any closer, Tom, because then you have to get in a tight punt. And the tight punt formation is sound, but it's a lousy one to cover a punt from. The battle of wits as they try to use the clock and the timeouts. The Redskins with two timeouts. The Eagles with none. Marion Campbell talking to the official. Fred Bruni on the left of your screen is trusted assistant. You know, and this punt coverage team has not allowed a punt return over 14 yards in the last 33 games. They've been doing a great job of covering punts. It's Don Hakes over there, the man in black and white that is being worked on by Swamp Box. The clock will start with the snap on this. I think so, yes. Caught me there thinking about something else, Mr. Brookshire. <laughs> There's Swampy. He's got that one bad finger. Not as bad as Bed Eric's, but he's got that one short one there. Bed Eric has five bad fingers <laughs> on one head. 
as we've said so many times today it's now or never for the guys in green and the Redskins have got to win all of their games and that includes today and this isn't over Cox from the back line of the end zone they're loaded up to the left it's, it's not a very good kick but it takes a Washington bounce out of bounds the Eagles have 45 seconds to go about 55 yards. I'll tell you this, with Mike Quick on the field and Ron Jaworski at quarterback, 45 seconds is enough time to win it. Well, you know you're going to get a double on Mike Quick, so do you worry about Kenny Jackson as the top, as the hot receiver on this? You'd have to, Tom. I don't think Kenny's had a ball today, has he? No. He hasn't had a ball. The Redskins' defense have really done a good job of eliminating the big play that the Eagles have relied upon in getting the ball to Mike Quick. And keep in mind, there are no Eagle timeouts. Any they may get to stop the clock has got to be out of bounds. 54 yards away. And they need a touchdown. From shotgun. Michael Haddock to the 41-yard line. The clock cannot be stopped. It's still running. The Eagles came in get it six and seven. He's got to get it off right now. Get it snapped. He can throw it out of bounds and stop the clock. That'll stop the clock. Intended for Kenny Jackson. Well, I can't get over how loosely Barry Wilburn, number 45, the Redskins' left corner, is playing the wide receiver from the Eagles. It looks He looks like he's got a 15-point lead, but he really doesn't. The Redskins came in 7-6, the Eagles 6-7. Earlier in the year, the Eagles had beaten the Redskins team. Richie Pettibone's down, now the defensive coordinator, talking to his coach. This is the one time you wish the ball was on offense when you're the defensive coordinator in this situation. But I really think they'll play it soft. You give them everything up in front, don't worry about it. They can't beat them with a field goal. Second down, 10. Jaworski in the shotgun again. Intercepted by Curtis Jordan. Jaworski went down the middle, overthrew his receiver, Chuck Greg Garrity, and Jordan came up with it. You'll see Jaworski in the middle of your screen, number seven, take the snap from the shotgun. Now he drops back, he reads the coverage, he's working down the seam to his left, overthrows right there. Now Jordan puts it away, and he looks like a punt returner in this situation. He gets running. I'll tell you, Monty Coleman got a heck look of a good look at drop, look at Joe. He's going, oh my gosh, we're going to win it. Ah, ah. <laughs> Great job by the Redskin yeah. linebackers today. Kaufman, Malott, Monty Coleman, Okowitz, incredible. Good football played by both football teams. This game is going to be history, but don't forget, as Marion Swamp Fox Campbell comes over to shake the hands of Joe Gibbs, it was not easy. But the Redskins are still alive. They're trying to go 10 and 6. And right now, they're 8 and 6. That was a hard-fought son of a gun. Oh, you could hear the contact up here all through the ball game, Tom. Two of the best drives of the year which took place the last two times these teams had the ball trying to get touchdowns. And both quarterbacks got hot in the second half. Schroeder, Schrader, Schroeder, was it Schrader was eight for nine at one time in the second half. The young and the old. We want to thank our executive producer, Terry O'Neill, for allowing us to bring you these productions. And Charles H. Milton III, the red eye from the Western Slope of Colorado. Michael Burks, you put us in the frame of mind, my friend. Thank you. And Johnny McDonough, you're the Andrew Wyeth of directors, in hey, our opinion. That's a way to bring them to our area. You like that, right? <laughs> Robert Rowe, the AD that's in my headset, and we constantly communicate. Lisa Elias and Johnny McRae and all the people that come and do a lot of the work that you people don't know about, but we certainly do. And there's a lot of work by the people behind the scenes. Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, and we hope you enjoy our productions on Sunday afternoons on CBS. The game started out so strangely, Dick Vermeil, with the safety being the only thing to start with. It was like 2 nothing, and then a field goal to make it 5 nothing. Then it was 5-3 when Mosley kicked the field goal before a half. And yet it was a well-played game. It was. There was the contact, again, the defensive teams, both teams playing so well. 
And uh, gradually, though, I think the offensive line of the Redskins warmed down, Tom, and they started running the ball and grinding it and grinding. Don't forget, we want to make you realize the NFL Today comes along next for the postgame show with Brent Musburger with all the highlights. And, of course, Craig Gleaver has helped us out with his stats. And Billy Friel, of course, making sure that I try to have the right people in the right numbers. And this is Tom Brookshire and Dick Vermeil. And it's been one of the interesting games of the year. And we hope you've enjoyed it. The Redskins roll on.